Hello and welcome to Good Brews, Bad Views, the podcast that asks if great beer makes bad movies any better. I'm your host, Max Nestorowicz, and as always, joined by my very helpful co-host, Ryan <laughs> Everhart. Yo, sorry. And the somewhat helpful James Thorpe. Uh -huh. Somewhat's a bit of a stretch. Somewhat, yes. Uh, we have stretch. a very special guest for this episode. Um, with that stretch. Person who puts mm -hmm. up with my bullshit way too much. Uh, James and very, Ryan, wait. Yeah, no. well, so besides you two. <laughs> <laughs> the very lovely Isn't that everybody in Stephanie this room? Yates, who knows more about beer and hockey than uh, all of us. All of us combined. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Welcome to the program. Mm -hmm. Hi. So, for first time guests, we have a number of questions we like to ask. Uh, number one. What is the first movie that you can remember ever seeing in theaters? The very first movie I ever saw in theaters was The Little Mermaid in 1989. Mm. And it was the only Disney movie I ever saw in theaters because I was so bored that I complained about it the whole way home. Wow. wow. <laughs> so you grew up in Guantanamo Bay or something? I was not a or Disney or child. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Question number two. What is the first bad movie you can ever, ever remember seeing? This is a hard one because I'm not like a big movie person, which I know is sacrilege, but like I had to really, really think about it because I didn't see movies in theaters when G -B 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 I was little. man, asking the hard questions. Yeah, for real. But um, do you guys remember when they did that Final Fantasy movie? Oh, and the then Children? Within. No. Um, the Spirits Within. The Spirits yeah. I have it on the shelf. It's yeah. right over there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went and saw it in theaters and it, like I knew it was going to be terrible, but I wow. Yeah. I also <laughs> disliked it with great intensity. Did, did yeah. you see it in the theater and you didn't like it? Yep. Drink. Yeah. Although it sounds like the first bad movie you saw was actually The Little Mermaid. That's true. I was but gonna I was... say, like, that could have also <laughs> been that. I was three, so... Very strong opinions at a young age. I, I like the, the popcorn, best. though. Mm -hmm. the, the movie theater experience was worth it for the popcorn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the last question, and probably the most important question, <laughs> what was the beer that showed you there was more to beer than American adjunct lager? So... My sophomore year of college, I did a study abroad in Prague in the Czech Republic, and uh, we flew over there. It was like a 12-hour flight when all was said and done. I got accosted by some security guards in Frankfurt for having a delightfully enormous accidental pair of scissors in my laptop case that I brought on the plane with me. Like, we, I, wait, how big? Are we talking like carrot top prop size? I, I, okay, maybe not that big, but they were like big sewing scissors. Mm. Uh, it, if you've never had Germans screamed at you in a foreign country on like two hours of sleep at what is the equivalent of like 4 a.m. your time, mm. it was not a pleasant yeah, experience. Time, yeah. uh, but anyway, we arrived there dead tired and we just wanted some food and we went across the street to this little pub and uh, found out that even though their tap water is completely safe to drink, they're snobby and European and will not drink it. So you can't order tap water. So your options are a $5 bottle of water or a $2 pint of Pilsner or Kell. And so we ordered a $2 pint of Pilsner or Kell and it was glorious mm. and that was my the first craft history, beer. Because yeah. that's mm -hmm. where Pilsner beer originated Correct. from. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Which what I didn't the, know at the time. Yeah, what was the time? Pilsen, P-L-Z-N. Pilsen, P-L-Z-E-N. Z-E-N, yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, as a good brew, bad view first, this week we are actually not drinking craft beer. We are drinking homebrew. Brought to us by Stephanie. Which is still craft beer. Yeah. Yes, yes. But not a, not not the <laughs> usual craft beer that not we consume. Arguably the most crafty of beer. The craftiest craft of beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> so Stephanie, tell us a little bit about this delightful beer you have brought. Yeah, before it's all gone. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's technically a Belgian dark strong is the BJCP standards now. It used to be a Belgian quadruple, but uh, we can we can discuss that at a later time. Um all right yeah uh what is this beer's name that is very appropriate for this movie so this beer was named as all my beers are named by my friend josh um who is much more clever than i am and he coined this beer john quad van damme <laughs> that's very, so good very cool very very appropriate because this week we are watching the 1995 Jean Claude Van Damme. I almost said Jean Claude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of like Claude. I can't even say the name correctly. Jean Claude anymore. Van Damme uh, movie Sudden Death, oh. where <laughs> James where JCVD pleased. must rescue his daughter who's been kidnapped by a terrorist during Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. So we are watching this on Amazon. If you're watching along with us, you don't have to, but the podcast is pretty much designed to mm -hmm. hit play. So, well, 
uh, where are we? Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes. I almost did it again. We're uh, Ryan's basement. We are 35 <laughs> seconds in. Uh, the <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, Yucatan Peninsula has just stopped over the beginning of the E on the Universal logo. Other um, way around. The E is stopped over the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh my God! Oh, shut <laughs> up! Why do we well, have? I'd here? be really confused if you were telling me that on the podcast. I'd be like, "Wait, what? When does that happen?" Yes. Okay. And I'd never watch the movie. You don't want to watch this movie right upset now. About, no, I won't right? either at all. No. I already know what your so, view again, so, brew again answer is so going viewers, to be. So, viewers, please, please start this movie when the Yucatan Peninsula appears over the E. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Ryan Connison. <laughs> All right, well, if you're watching along, once again, 35 seconds in, press play now. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. hockey. Mm-hmm. The greatest of sports. It mm. is the greatest of sports. That's a correct statement. Eh. Yep. I don't know. We, we did watch a movie that involved curling, which I would put above this movie any uh, day of the week. Curling is pretty fabulous, too. Yes. Right? Have you ever actually curled? No. It no. is real hard. I don't. I want it. to. There's the Detroit Curling Club yes. that you can curl. Yeah, there is a yes. there is like a curling thing that goes That's on. Where I Radio did for it. four. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you guys want to do curling next year? Yeah. yeah. Well, All right. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's you know it's year round, right? We can do that this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. you I'm can just do it They don't do it outside. You I didn't know if it was season. And it also is becoming winter. Yes, I'm aware. So one of my questions were: I know how Stephanie feels about hockey, but I don't know how you guys feel about hockey. And by you guys, I mean Ryan, because James, you don't like anything below. 50 degrees Fahrenheit, unless it's some sort of frozen coconut confection. Hmm. So, Ryan, how do you feel about hockey? I the same feeling I have towards more, most 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 sports. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just uh, my feelings are: hey, go sports team, make points. I I don't generally care. I mean, I, I one of my buddies I grew up with, Dave Ashworth, who is a great dude. So I funny story. Oh yeah, I was in the Japanese program with Dave at Western. Oh, he is such a good guy. Yeah, no, Dave and I grew up together, and um, I used to go over to his house a lot to watch hockey because he and his family are big into it. Um, but I, I use it as a as a social vessel. I I don't care much for the outcome. Also, I like hockey. You jerk. You do? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Surprising. Hmm. I learned something today. <laughs> And I also am not a huge fan of Mai Tais, so or pina coladas. I meant like so you were wrong on both accounts. I meant those ha! like coconut yogurt bars you had, or frozen coconut frozen yogurt bars you had over the summer. oh the coconut milk bars. I yeah, had. yeah, those were good. Yeah, that's what I meant by frozen culinary confection. That's oh, that's a, a very that's a... specific memory for you to pick out. And yeah. Meanwhile, he's sitting here like, what coconut bars? Yeah. What? What? Let's all focus on this guy, this co-producer, Jack Frost Sanders. Yes, I, I saw his name at the very end of the, of the movie, and I wanted to mention it, but you stole my thunder, right? Oh, well, that's mm. unfortunate. It uh, is. Do you want to hear a story things. about the uh, the like writer-producer of this movie, though? They were owners yes. of the Penguins, and the the wife who wrote the, the script, uh, she wanted to write, like, Die Hard plus Hockey. I was going to say that yeah. because uh, it so obviously exactly. is. Mm-hmm. And Aaron she, Baldwin. like, presented it to her husband, and he was like, this is great, but how are we ever going to get a hockey team to let us do this in their arena? And then he realized they own the Penguins. <laughs> right. Yeah. You'd think you would have realized that pretty early on. Yeah. But <laughs> this, this so, okay, so this movie opens with a pretty cool continuous shot. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right? It, it's it is a nice long take, and it's a really frustrating red herring for the quality of the rest of the film. <laughs> it is, yeah. So the director of this movie is Peter Hames. Hames, I'm not sure Hames. how to pronounce his last name. Same director that did Time Cop, which John Claude Van Damme also. I saw that in the theater. Time I love Cop. Time Cop. I don't remember much, but it's I remember really cheesy. enjoying the cheese. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think my dad took me. Yeah. Hop 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 hop. <laughs> It's going right in her mouth. Stop yeah. with the water. I had forgotten that this was the opening to this movie. And when I like watched it the other day again, it, I like I thought I had downloaded the wrong movie at first. Mm. This is super depressing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for this. So he does some good sad acting. Yeah, yeah this I mean, that's, that's a big deal because movies like 90s movies didn't they, kill kids. Yeah. Mm. It's I mean, it's it's taboo ish in cinema in general. Yeah. Yes. And the it was they did. 80s killed a lot of kids. <laughs> so, because I mean, like they don't. There's, I know that there's stories that have been that were changed so that kids did not die in them. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's not something. It's still a big deal to, to yeah, show I, I a, think to when, show I think a child you, die on screen yeah. is still a big deal, and not like oh, a building blew up. Like to show that, yeah, right. really, a big yeah. deal. It's usually just done for narrative purposes, which I is always like. a good reason to do something. 
Yeah. Eh. <laughs> My plot device is dead children. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah. way that you can tell this movie is from the 1990s is because the NHL is still on ESPN. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yep. And the Penguins are still playing at the Civic Arena. Mm-hmm. Melon Arena. It was Ooh. the Civic Arena when this movie came out. Now, you've been, Stephanie, you've been to <sighs> a lot head. of different hockey arenas. 11? Yes. 12 counting the, 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 the Little if Caesars Arena? 12 if you count Little Caesars. It'll be 13 after next week. Mm. Did you go to this Penguins Arena or I did you go to not, their new one? I was not ever at the Igloo, no. I almost had a chance to go when they were in the playoffs the last year that they played there, but I did not. I actually haven't been to um, the new arena either. I haven't been to the Penguins. Everybody, hold on. No, hold, hold, hold on. Bono lost his dog. We need to yeah. find it. Yep. Stat. <laughs> There's a lot of like... Actors who are like the uglier versions of other actors right. in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do like that the the guy is so upfront about this. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't nice. Yeah, yeah. This is like the rude earring gang. Everyone in this gang has a, a gaudy, earring. terrible earring. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I assume this is what Bono does between concerts. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an international terrorist. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they're international in this. They're just national. <laughs> yeah. Yes, CIA. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he makes a very good point to say that he isn't a terrorist, even though that's a lie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's gosh. And then stepdad uh, falls off the railing and tumbles into the oncoming traffic somewhere. Yeah. Have any of you guys ever been to Pittsburgh? Negative. I have been to Pittsburgh. It's a it's a nice city. There's a uh, really good all sours brewery. Ooh, downtown. Nice. There's also a Hofbrauhaus house downtown on the river. Mm. There is. Do you think that Jean Claude is jealous of his ex wife's haircut because they have the almost Definitely. exact same one? Oh yeah. She, yeah, she just has bangs. Yeah. <laughs> that guy looks like Diet Kevin Spacey. He does. Like I was saying. Yeah. Just... Uglier versions of other actors. And this chick is like different Abigail Breslin, the daughter. Yeah. Nice uh, Eastern European church there in the background. Mm-hmm. The, so, uh, the old school Penguins logo is so much better than the modern Penguins logo. I'm sorry. That is 100% correct. It's mm-hmm. so much better. Why would you practice to be deaf? Yep. Working at the arena. I don't know what parent in a town that has a reputable hockey team would be like, sorry, kids, you can't go to game seven of the Stanley Cup finals, which well, is, you know, a home game. I mean, it is an as, American town. I mean, as a divorce baby, We're this Michigan, shit so. happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a thing. Like, you can tell this is the, like, escalating him trying, this is him trying to escalate and, like, get the kids when he should. Yeah. Be right. Then. Yeah. Hmm. But and that's the last the, we see of the wife, I think, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And the husband. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I like that But I, I will say it would, mm. it would be more of like a sleazy move if the kids weren't into hockey. Just being like, hey, I got tickets. Yeah, you're coming to hockey, you little but, punks. But yeah, yeah, but that is, I think that it's an totally extra sleazy move because no, the kids like say. hockey. Exactly. You know that the kids are going to jump yeah, on okay. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just think his character in this movie doesn't seem like smart Ugh. enough to be that sleazy. The, no, I think that, he's just dumb. Yeah. yeah. That panning shot needs like the equipping action of weapons, but then another table of just earrings where they're all picking them yep. up and <laughs> slapping them on their heads. That's the uh, Brooks like, version of different. this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking weird. Also stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for this. I want, I want more exploding, Ex- exploding, exploding plush toys. Merchandise, yep. Explo- Everyone just like nobody smiles. Yep. Now an Explodo merch. Particularly, everyone's like, "Oh, we gotta get out of here." So you're thinking that this is gonna be like a big explosion, and it's yeah. all like pink. <laughs> it's yeah. like a party favor. Yeah. I am in general support of Powers Booth in pretty much anything. Yep. He passed away recently, unfortunately. That's a bummer. He was great in Sin City. He was. Mm-hmm. He's the um, the senator, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. His son is Kevin Elijah Wood. Yes, uh, not his son. His son is the his son is the yellow bastard. Kevin's just the weird. Oh, Ke- right. You're right. Kid you're at right. the farm. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That was not much of a payoff. The the countdown 
that they keep putting on the I screen know, is <laughs> weird and unnecessary. Like, there's really no build up to it. No, no. Like I could see maybe and if they did it like once, but it does it like five times. Yeah, it's like okay. two minutes to face off. Yeah, there's no. Uh, there's really no. Especially when the time thing. is being cataloged for you by the game happening. Yeah, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like these like apparently cake. Or like lettuce cakes that guy has there because those are co- totally cake containers right. to the right, right there, and they're cake just filled with lettuce. So now they they might be thinking about it actually just seeing that scene there. They might be pre-positioned like trays to put other food vegetables on, on. Right. yeah, they, they for catering be. purposes, you know. Yeah, but they look like cake, like lettuce cakes. Mm. Going for cake and getting lettuce that'll get a bit right. cut. Quite disappointing. I will cut 100% you. One hundred percent gardening outfit. <laughs> I don't Is know. It, I would wear the crap out of that hat. I don't know. Oh, I know you would, but like, but, like the, the like the blousey, flowery. <laughs> this is where they pan up, and there's just a guy laying there, just, just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing over and over again. <laughs> You'll make good fertilizer. Would it surprise <laughs> you, given what we've seen of this movie well, so far? I don't know. She's the mother of Marty. She kind of looks like Aunt May. It's a ugly John Travolta. Yeah, no kidding. That was a good pull, Ryan, and you missed it. Mm. <laughs> What'd you say? Said she's the mother of Marty. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Ninety minutes until face off. A half hour has gone by in yeah, that last yeah. two minutes of scene that we watched. Which is mm-hmm. nice because in like an hour, twenty five minutes goes by and about three <laughs> minutes comes off the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. This would totally be a scene where they would drop Stan they, Lee. I, I was thinking the exact <laughs> oh, <yeah>. same thing. <laughs> and he'd say something like, Well, little girl, your stamp is marvelous. Ah! Also, I mean, going back to the die, hard, you know, I'm die hard stamp here, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you know, Schroeder die hard on stamp. ice. It's, I mean, McCord, McLean, come on, try harder. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the pull that it was the two goons being mm. like, "Hey, yeah. do this later." <laughs> that guy's got Mitch McConnell neck. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, that's not a good look. <laughs> I'm gonna go do the splits in every room in this building. Yeah. Mm. So, I was, I thought that, like, when I, because I, I've seen this before, but I obviously didn't remember any of it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, when he first saw her, I was like, okay, that, I'm wondering if, like, that was going to be his love interest. In yeah. Right. Like, I expected, like, oh, that's Jean-Claude Van Damme's girlfriend. For right. This. You know, he's yeah. moved on, he's blah, blah, blah. I expected her to be a much more prominent in this story mm-hmm. than. Nope. That's actual Luke Robitaille. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, little boy, you want to see a bunch of grown men's wieners? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of the players in this locker room are the actual penguins. Mm. Do you like movies about gladiators, kid? They're mostly kid? ex-penguins, though. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not, yeah. Robitaille is the only active NHL player. I thought this was really cool, though. It's not often you get to see Van Damme just speak in, his, in French, right? Yeah. He's, he's not French, though. Isn't Well, he speaks French, doesn't he? he yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's um, X Penguins, Jay Caulfield. For a minute, I was like, "Is that Henry Rollins?" I don't know hockey. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good hockey hair. Yeah, mm-hmm. they actually brought in like three or four, like old players from the team, and and had them act in these scenes. And uh, a lot of the filming of the teams on the ice is also the actual penguins. That's pretty cool. But um, 1994, 95, they planned on just using footage from actual Penguins games and the crowd and the, the scenes on ice and everything. Mm-hmm. But that was the year of the lockout. Mm. So uh. they ended up having the Penguins play their minor league team dressed up in Blackhawks jerseys. Yep. And that's all that cuts. I think they're from Cleveland. Nice. So in the first, in the scene where the first goal, I think it's the first goal is scored. It's a very quick shot, you know, looking the camera, looking at the net and the crowd behind. You can see that about, 80% of the seats are filled with cardboard cutouts, and it's amazing. They said it was, they had a really hard time. It was like, so good. To stay, like, standing <laughs> up. Because like, you, you can see the same dude, like, 19 times in a row. That's awesome. They had 10,000. No 000, one cuts anything like that. Sorry. They had 10,000 cardboard cutouts and, like, 200 actual humans. That's amazing. Yeah. So, like a, so, like, a uh, classic PlayStation 1 game. Right. Yeah. Yep. And they had to get um, Dude, that's they had awesome. to get permission from uh, Bob Goodenow, the players, the NHLPA players, uh, director of players association. Yes, 
uh, they had to get his permission to use anybody on the team to play that scrimmage and to like fill that arena. That's yeah. awesome. Mm. Like Chris, like they at one point they're like, "Oh, Chris Chelios is on the field," and it's not actually Chris Chelios. Yager mm-hmm. hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Supposedly Mario Lemieux is in this movie somewhere is as his, himself. Is his middle name Peppy? Say yes. No. Oh. They the Mar- actually, uh, they do have Mike Lange doing all the announcing. They had him film all of his lines for this movie after an actual Penguins home game. That's, That's great. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's some of those little cool little things, but mm-hmm. Mario Lemieux, it's, he's like the Steve Eiserman of the Penguins. From like This, this uh, arena is on like Mario Lemieux Avenue or whatever. Yeah. And... They he, did a study with if they stat adjusted, like in, uh, era adjusted his stats, he's like Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Close he, to it. He had the unfortunate thing of being the best player immediately after Wayne Gretzky. Mm-hmm. So he gets he was compared to him all the time. Mm. <laughs> she makes a good point though. Mm-hmm. Man, I really wanted to. He won the draft in the earring pick in the earring lineup. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Either that or he rated hers. Mm. That's right. what I'll yeah. <laughs> I love her response here. Right. I, I think it's great. Yeah. I would have laughed if there was a scene where he just like takes off her earring and puts it in his ear. Mm. <laughs> just gotta take a peek in there. In a frilly salmon shirt, you're not that threatening. Yeah, he yeah. he has not left the eighties. That's a great line. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's a great line. <laughs> Keep that's like rules. Yeah. Hey, man, is that I'm actual sorry. hockey player? Don't know. Looking at you, Steph. Couldn't tell you. All right. You don't recognize the ass? No. <laughs> All right. We don't get to see those very often. Mm. It's not really part of the post game coverage. <laughs> Love it. Sometimes in the in the uh, NFL, it is. <laughs> that's true. A couple of years ago, they. Uh, Deadspin, of course, made sure that they posted up when uh, some Cowboys players' uh, front ends were <laughs> po- were were on TV because Excellent. they were walking around and just they had news cameras in there. So, that sounds Speaking about right. Speaking of nudity in football games, did you hear that Justin Timberlake is going to do the halftime show again? I did hear yes, that. I did. <coughs> did you guys see when that happened? Yep, mm-hmm. I did too. I also like to there the the. the like the the VP shows up and he knows the guy's name. Like he's clearly there to actually enjoy the game. He's not right. Yeah, he's, like, not, he's not. Pulling I the am pens. the vice president. I yeah. will wave to you. Yeah. I like the line. Are you Democrats, Republicans, or Canadians? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a good line too. There's, I mean, there's there's some pretty good lines in this. Right. Yeah, yeah. Although I, think I, that... I will admit this movie is not what I expected it to be. Yeah, have you same. seen this before? No, I have not. Okay. No, this is my first time as well. Okay. I. I think the movie starts off stronger before the action starts. Actually, I think that it builds up and it's good. Like yeah, the, like the it, setup is good, but I, the action, I think, has something to be. It's, to, a little, it's lackluster. It's lackluster, and it's so contained. Like you only have Melon Arena to work with, so it's yeah. very like. Yeah, you could do a, you could do a lot with that though. But like they, there's parts of it where they they clearly are like, well, we've been in these spots already, so they just inexplicably start fighting. Right. Like in areas where you're just like, why are you here? There's no reason to be here. Yeah. Um. But, like this, this all the all of this is really good. Like she clearly is, she, mm-hmm. she does a good job acting here, where she's reading something off, and oh, I like it. I like it. I mean, the easy and stupid. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Easy the cookies. You know, a little eyebrow raised there. Yeah. And we we were kind of talking just before we started recording that this isn't for a Van Damme movie. This is kind of not what you'd expect a lot of times, especially with Van Damme's character. Yeah. yeah. For a lot yeah. of the movie. Because, like, as I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, he's an ex-fireman. Mm-hmm. Van Damme's known for his kicks, right. spinning yeah. back heel Splits. kicks. Splits. Splits. And, uh, like, I'm like, how are they going to justify this guy, this fireman, like, having those moves? Right. And he he does a little bit of his of his signature stuff, but he right. doesn't go all out kickboxer. Or even, like, in our last movie, Cyborg, where he was, you know... Right. Doing the splits over a sewer tunnel and then <laughs> stabbing someone as they walked through. It's a trap! Yes. Them's my homies. But Powers Booth looks a lot like Elon Clancy Musk. Brown. Similar shaped head as Clancy Brown. Mm. That rectangular mm. shaped mm. head. He looks like Elon Musk to me at times. <laughs> His younger self, anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Powers younger self. Yeah. Powers isn't quite skinny enough mm. there. But I, can I like how there's for... an entirely empty section that's still yeah. there. Mm. Yay! That's in case they hit a home run with the puck. They don't want to hurt anyone 
That's why they have those nets up there. Mm. I'm not. I'm not joking. That's why they have those nets up there. Mm-hmm. Understood. Oh, that guy's glasses. Check it out. <laughs> you ever been up in one of the suites for a game? It's sweet. It's nice. weird. <laughs> yeah. It's a very odd experience. It's it yeah. Is really it's weird. It's kind. Of, it's very removed from a lot of the mirthful activity. Of, yeah. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. It, it's like. But still fun. It's like having an arena outside your back door. Almost, yeah. yeah. You're like yeah. You're, you're like in a living room. Right. And there just happens to be you. a sporting event mm-hmm. going on. Like yeah, right. A hundred feet below you. Yeah. What the weird. Like I went to um a suite at Tiger Stadium like mm-hmm. way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And um, it was it was so weird that you could like watch the game on a TV, and then you could go outside the door, yep. and there's like and there's yeah. six the seats, and there's a game right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's a um at a um where the Blue Jays play in Toronto. The there's a hotel that backs up against it, yes, and you is. can you can rent rooms that back up to the stadium. You mm-hmm. just open your That's windows cool. and you can watch baseball. That used to be called the Sky Dome, but I don't yes. know what sponsor now it's, owns it. Uh, uh, Rogers. That's Rogers, Rogers, Center. Rogers Center. Yep, that's right. They still call it the Sky Dome. Is it the Vagisil Arena? <laughs> yeah. That's also how I defend my popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is this is a great scene for editing, as far as like you're going, you know, like the, the, quick the takeover, the, the anthem in the background, and just yeah. like the actual plot is starting to unfold. I mm-hmm. really like the the anthem, and then the like the dramatic music over exactly, top yeah. of it. I really like how they did that. Actual uh, national anthem, mm. a uh, performer. Can't remember his name because mm. I'm like, wow, that is some hair that guy has. But yeah, yeah we just missed. I like that. It's begrudgingly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll 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 do our best to keep. Like, poli- still holding the gun. Yeah, politics yep. out of this. Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. You Who's suck. Jerk move. Yep. You don't deserve that earring. Nope. Andrew. Oh no! Mm. You know what really bothers me about this movie? The, every time I watch it, it bothers me more. It's Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. If they orchestrated this complex of a plot, there is like the chance of this series going to a Game Seven. What is the likelihood? What if it <laughs> ended in Game Four, or Five, or Six? Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, we find out that Powers Booth is part of the Secret Service. Yep. So he, so I assume when the vice president is going to go to a game for whatever, like he's like, oh, I want to go to Game Seven, and if it's going to go to, you know, Game Six or I, don't, I assume he, the the vice president, maybe been to a couple games. So then they would had... have had to orchestrate this whole plot in between Game Six and Game Seven, though. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They, I was trying to think like, oh, maybe he had backup <laughs> plans. If if I would, I would, I completely agree with you, and I think it would be a lot less of a of a stretch if they didn't have the bomb plot. If it was just like, hey, we're gonna yeah. Yeah. kidnap this dude's yeah. wife and get into the booth. Okay, that's easy enough to pull off, right? If, especially yeah. if you have the the resources of the Secret Service to get away with mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Well, this movie is kind of interesting. It does. It gets you go like twenty five minutes before you figure out what the hell Powers Booth is up to. Right. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you're like, oh, okay, he's got the vice president locked in a box. Like, part of me was like, why didn't they just have the president instead? Mm. You know, that would have been like, oh, like a higher stakes kind of thing. But yeah, but Powers Booth is just chewing the scenery for the rest of the movie that he's on. Oh, certainly. Also, do you do you, do you like how they just very quickly cut to show you that the the chef was also killed? Yeah. Well, yeah, he, he, he was kind he, of he in the background a bit too. Yeah. Just kind of yeah, because he's like, oh yeah, his, his wife is recently deceased. He would have been lonely. Mm-hmm. And he'll be in the shot in just a moment here. Oh no, no that they it just passed. Go, they didn't go fast enough. No, they, right. they've already moved him. Oh, okay. So I guess Chad Kroger from Nickelback is a terrorist? <laughs> well, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fashionable to hate on Nickelback. Dang, what the fuck is three? that guy's deal? Yeah. He's the hackerman. Hackerman. I don't know who to root for in this game. Hmm. Blackhawks. Well, there you have it. Yeah, because I'm not rooting oh. for the Penguins. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> That's know, actually like, a funny little joke. 1995 yeah. penguins. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Also, you're super annoying. Yeah. I have to do my job, which apparently involves me doing nothing. All right. <laughs> I, yeah, I assume like his job would be stuff he would do before like the game started. Like, make sure all the fire lights are working. Yeah. Or, yeah. Count the number of people in the arena so it's not over the sign posted mm-hmm. that says maximum, maximum maximum occupancy. I got a license for it. <laughs> yeah, I got my CCW. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me thinks this is like Sidney Crosby's origin story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Little shit. Sidney Crosby has. One one hundredth the personality of that little kid, though. (laughs) (laughs) That said, not to leave, not to not be a dick. Right. Yeah. Look in the back. Look at the short. Maybe it's not this one. Maybe it's a different Ah! goal. I love the old school. uh, Yeah, the LEDs. LEDs. Just, just they're just. I think they're just yellow incandescents. Yeah, it might just be. I actually really missed that yeah. at, at Little Caesars Arena. I was like, but... Uh, all the shrimp. Yeah. Oh, because they're all now... All, all, it's all... It's like one... Yeah, it's, it's one a giant, giant TV fancy, yeah. beautiful screen. And all mm-hmm. the numbers and the score and everything is at the bottom instead of the top. Because mm. the top's a little bit obstructed depending on where you sit. Oh, okay. I couldn't find the score for like the first half of the first period. Yeah. Click, 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 click. Man, back when TVs had switches mm-hmm. on the front. Yeah. Right. And a, and a suitcase full of tiny tube TVs would be extremely heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so this is supposed to be the 1995 Stanley Cup uh, championship, wh- which was won by the New Jersey Devils hmm. in 95. The Jersey Devils. <laughs> oh, powers. So many monologues. Yeah. yeah. He's another instance of phone book voice. I could just listen to this guy read the phone book. Cool voice. It's a good line there, too. Another brought, good line. Yeah, brought we'll close by uh, skinny George Costanza from Seinfeld. <laughs> Jason Alexander. Of uh, Dunstan Checks In fame. Oh, gosh. Dunstan Checks In. <laughs> yeah, that's something I haven't heard of in a long time. Wow, yeah, that, <laughs> that is a fodder. deep, deep Throwback. cut. <laughs> the guy they have playing the vice president looks like a, a composite politician. Like, you could have told me, like, this is a senator. I'd be like, yep, Certainly, that is a yeah. senator. Obviously. Yeah. It bothers me that they don't just use the decimal version of saying, you know, 1. 1.7 billion. billion there's not even that well, much money it's, in it's 1960. Weird because it's a different, <laughs> I don't know, maybe because it's so, it's 95, so that was like a different amount of money. Yeah. Like, remember in, sure like, too. the very, very first Austin Powers where he's like, one, one million dollars. dollars. He's yeah. like, one hundred <laughs> billion dollars. Like, he, like, he can't, like, right. fathom that amount of money. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. Flash presidents. Hmm. Hmm. Is that a thing? Is that a real term? I don't know. James, you work for the I'm government. Skeptical. Well, they're going to flash the president. I mean, whatever. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you can. <laughs> <laughs> that does mean too. It's going to. It's probably a flash priority message. Is what it is. Mm, so. Yeah. Alert! Stop! <laughs> Release all the money! Stop! <laughs> it's not a telegram. That's pretty <laughs> alert. You, there's nothing more. Uh, pressing in a telegram. Fifteen thousand dollar wristwatch. Come I'm on, yeah, the guy the fifteen thousand dollar wristwatch is going to shoot you. Come on. I'm surprised Power Booth was never a James Bond villain. That'd be great. Yeah. I'd be on. I'd be on board with that. I'm assuming they're referring to a player, but there's not a single player in the NHL yeah, but, that but, makes anywhere. I mean, the, the largest contract in the NHL right now is $12 million, and it's Connor McDavid. It happened this season. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm not really sure who's making $40 million. Per year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I imagine his reference is just to the like the size of the contract. Maybe. 
Could be Rabbit Town. So this whole sequence right here is predicated on the fact that nobody has cell phones in this movie. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Like I, I wrote that down. Like this movie is very different in ten years. Yes. Not as different as Home Alone. Right. But yeah. it's still different. Yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Well, I think that's like with with any media. Like you, like I've been watching. Like every now and then, I, I watch some like classic cinema to cleanse my palate after watching all of these garbage <laughs> movies. <It's> probably wise. <laughs> so just like you know, watching old films from like the forties and whatnot, being like, "Wow, imagine if they had a phone uh, or a yeah. television." Right. Yeah the the internet makes this a thirteen minute movie. Yes. Yeah. Enhance. <laughs> Zoom and enhance. It's it's weird though. So like they're like they're like we're calling all the cops and calling all the um the firemen, but we're not telling anyone in the we're not telling anybody in the media, and we're not getting the FBI involved. This is our thing, right. and because like, it's 1995, that can happen. There, yeah, is this the one with the background shot? Man, I'm gonna have to find this after the recording. There, there, there it is. Zoom yeah, off. <laughs> You're right. Everywhere, a quick shot of the. I, I would not have noticed unless you had pointed that it's out. Actually it's actually kind of creepy. Yeah, that's because awesome. your eyes don't go to the upper part of that shot. My eyes never go where you expect, Max. Yeah. I appreciate that the guy is wearing suspenders. Hmm. Not booth powers. No, part of booth. The yeah, hacker I, I, the hacker. Yeah, I appreciate that he took a, some time out of his busy schedule as part of the bare naked ladies to be in a movie. <laughs> He looks more like Wayne Knight than Jason Alexander. Maybe a composite of both. Yeah. Oh, we're talking compositing people. Oh, yeah. There we go again. Orange Aid. <laughs> Coker Sprite. How about Jack? All right. Yeah. Girl knows what, she, knows what she wants. Also, do they serve them in cups? Was I that, have never seen is... an arena in the... In... <laughs> Where did you just get the cup? I've been to 11, and I've never seen anybody walking around with... Yeah, that I seems unlikely. Like way back in the day, like in the 90s, they yeah, were that's serving what they pop serve. like that. Yeah, they oh, we used to go to Maple Leaf Gardens, and I never saw it like that hmm. there, but hmm. maybe maybe Canadians just know what's up. Yeah, You're not polluting? I'm sure they serve it in a can. You can just pollute with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you in the face some more. Yeah. Who am I going to make fun of? This is the Unix system. Hmm. I know this. <laughs> They're stealing all the IPs. Dun, dun, dun. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, boy. I am continually impressed by sports announcers, particularly in hockey. The game is so fast. Mm -hmm. That's not one of those things that's like, how does one become a sports announcer? Mm -hmm. You go into broadcasting in school. Yeah. Or you become a, or you're an ex player. They do every, yeah, that's true too. That's usually color commentators, though. I find right. they're yeah. the ex players, yeah. but the actual like calling the games. Everybody that I've heard like stories of that that's done that. I mean, they're like they've known that's what they wanted to do since they were little kids. Like you sit and watch TV right, and like so call the games as you're sitting there it watching and get used it. To it. And, like, I actually considered going into that at Michigan State. Really, really. Yeah, well, I Michigan did. State has a very good um, broadcast broadcasting school. and radio program. Yeah, that's something I did consider going into. Hmm. Does anyone else wonder why the wife died after she got shot in the shoulder? Anyone? Shock. Shot in the shoulder. Uh, shock is what I'm saying. Hmm. Uh, she uh, got hit in her arm control nerves and uh, hmm. my um, arm control oh. nerve. <laughs> <laughs> Deep cut to Invader Zim. The uh, the t-shirts tucked into shorts by those women also tells you that this movie was filmed <laughs> in the 90s. Exactly <laughs> when it was made. <laughs> yep. Very true. Mm. This is a far cry from the Deadpool Zamboni scene. Yes, mm. that is true. <laughs> yeah. Although there is another good Zamboni scene. Oh, right? gosh, that was a great Zamboni scene. Later on. But um, we'll get to that when we get to that. So, Stephanie, before we drink the rest of this beer, <laughs> tell us more in depth about this beer also is the there more and is there more there's not more i almost brought more it's so sad Ryan, we, that's have. why we have the backup brews mm. <laughs> which we will get into because we still have a lot of movie left that's a lot very of brew. too much movie left it's a long yep. movie 
It's you know that's something I know I'm supposed to be talking about the beer right now, but this is like an almost two hour long movie. Yeah, like mm-hmm. in the 1990s, I feel like movies, especially this style of movie, like I wouldn't have expected. It's it a to little be longer long. than expected. Hashtag yeah. penis jokes, but yes, <laughs> yeah. That's that's a completely unnecessary banister leap. By yeah, the way. Sa- yeah. Same from Mr. Van Dam. Yeah, banister leaps don't have the same effect when it's on like a sloped surface. Right. So this is the second time you've made Jean Claude. Yes, this is the second time. Uh, it's um. So it's traditionally Belgian. Belgian quad is not a traditional style. The uh, the Trappist breweries in in Belgium, uh, they brew singles, they brew doubles, and they brew triples. Those are the three typical uh, Abbey Ale styles, Trappist Ale styles. Um, but if you actually go to Belgium, they don't like to. They don't like to categorize their beers. Like you go to a brewery there and, and you order, you know, I want the triple. They don't like to say that this is just my beer. This is the beer that I brewed, the beer that I made in my brewery. They don't like styles. Um, but in the United States, we like to categorize and style everything. So uh, we actually, Belgian quadruple is um, now it's Belgian dark, strong ale. Uh, the BJCP just decided that because um, the original Belgian quadruple ale was brewed by a beer or a brewery in the Netherlands, and they actually brewed that beer like as kind of like a clever like, oh, we're going to make an extra strong one, and it's not a single, double, or triple; it's a quadruple. So it's actually not a style of beer; it's a name of a particular brand of beer. That's where it came from. Um, so this is a Belgian quad, but I used a little bit different malt and we added uh black currants pureed black currants in the uh mash not mm-hmm. in the mash in the boil well and it's very good thank you yeah but this is the second time we brewed it and uh it was about a year and a half in between and we got much better as home brewers and our efficiencies went way up and so this is supposed to be about a eight and a half percent alcohol beer which is actually a little bit low for a quad but the second time we brewed it it came out probably about 10%, which is a little high for a quad, which <laughs> might mean it's a good thing that I didn't bring extra. Mm. <laughs> Respectfully disagree. <laughs> it is very good. You yes. can really taste the, the current. Thank you. Mm. Current. Yeah, yeah, this, this is, is the uh, second current beer mm-hmm. you had that Saison from Saison, Andrews, right. which was very good. Um, how many years have you been uh, homebrewing now? Uh, it will be four years this January. Very good. So this is probably the original Jean Quad was probably the best beer that I had brewed up to that date. Um, and Belgian quadruples are supposed to have some dark fruit, raisins, dates, that kind of thing going on. Um, I like currants, so I thought it would be fun to add them and see how it turned out. It gave it a little bit of an astringency that you don't always find in quads, which I kind of like. I'm like really tooting my own horn on this beer, but I think it came out really <laughs> toot good. away. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you brought the beer. We've been saying it's, you know, your home brew, so like toot, toot away. Also, just real quickly, how about I fill your little mouth with spiders is a horrifying threat (laughs) from like two minutes ago. Yeah. I also like the, the the shot of them just coming back to him trying to pry open. (laughs) He's been fighting with it for 20 minutes. (laughs) Because presumably he's been doing that since the whole time the elevator went up. Yeah. Yeah, we get our first few tastes of the uh, fire martial arts in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is very Beverly Hills Cop 3. Hmm. Yeah. This is... I don't know that I've seen that movie. The scenes in here... Hey, there's the cake salads. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, the fighting the mascot's funny. Yeah. Um, I think the scenes in the kitchen are the best action scenes in the entire Why is all yeah. this shit still on? Everyone was That's told to leave. That's my other question, too. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> there's still meat on the grill? Well, right. he was, well, they said, like, okay, when you go upstairs, everyone's dismissed, and he'll come back and clean up. He never came back down. So that's why everything is but still out. But there's still meat on the grill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there's, it it, it shouldn't be Andrew cleaning fire. up, right? Yeah. It, it should be I non-Andrew mean, people. When I was in college, I worked for athletic facilities, and we used to like have to clean up the sweets. And at the end of the game, you were scrounging around. I mean, anything that was left over that you could eat that didn't look like someone had manhandled, like you consumed. And mm. if that were me working in that kitchen, I would leave myself some food to come right. back to. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of food, but it's actively that's cooking. That's true. It is that's actively. Yeah. How long have those French fries been at in least there? The, for? At least the periods worth. Right. Yeah. 
Oh my oh god. god. Yeah. Oh That's, god. It's just You're, brutal. This scene is like, okay, what is every <laughs> dangerous thing in a kitchen we can have yeah. that can have a fight scene in? So it's like fryer, uh, meat slicer, so, stove. Two two observations. Man. Observation one, there's a lot of violence in this movie against salads, which I understand. Um, Observation number two, do you think this is where Family Guy got the idea for their very long-running chicken fight joke? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) They might have. I would not be surprised. I love this. Oh, yeah. It's so good. good. (laughs) (laughs) The scream is what sells it. (laughs) Crushed red pepper to death. The, uh... The wife of the producer that wrote it, she like really, really wanted this to be a woman in this scene for some reason. Really, like, she wanted like the yeah the villain to be. This is brutal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will well, say the also the music cues on this for this that the, this past scene were great. Like the horn blares, like yeah. with the punches and the kicks. It's also clever oh my of God. them to have the mascot be a woman because then there isn't a scene in John Claude's career where he is beating a woman up. That's true. In a kitchen. Yeah. Hmm. So you don't actually see him, like, physically hitting a woman with punches or kicks or anything. It's just punching a mascot. Yeah. These cops have been loading guns for, like, 40 minutes. (laughs) Well, they have nothing else to do. (laughs) They can't go into the building. Hmm. Nope. Yep, they got cardboard. I'm noticing the cardboard cutouts all the time now. There's more. There's so many. <laughs> Tiny, Amazing. annoying details. It's one of the few things I offer this podcast. <laughs> that kid's haircut is very odd. His it's whole like, face is kind of odd. Well, Sorry, kid. Like, he's got a whole lot of hair in the back. Like, it's not a haircut. It just looks like he has, f- it, like, like the, the follicle density just gets way more thick <laughs> as he gets to the back of his head. Like, hmm. So he's halfway to becoming Cousin It. Yes. Hmm. Like, next time you see him, look, he's got way more hair in the back than the front. Hmm. Maybe he's maybe he just really ahead of the time of doing like the whole like scene big hair. Maybe. Going to the going to the diehard thing, it makes a lot of sense with the with the one names that they throw on mm-hmm. stuff. Hallmark, McCord, yeah, Foss, well, yeah. Uh. One two carry the. Seven. Mm-hmm. Just chewing the scene so mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's also a lie. You killed way more people. Right. Like he just he True. discounted all of the people that he killed and then removed from the room. It's like they don't count. <laughs> I don't, he has no object permanence. Yeah. Well, I think the question was in the room, right? Yeah. Wasn't that the question? He's very, that was he's asked? very literal. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, them phones. So in your expert home brewing opinion, Miss Stephanie, who makes your favorite Belgian Dark Strong, aka Belgian quad? Cause we've we've had a, a handful of of quads so, slash Belgian mm-hmm. Dark Strongs on the podcast. The best example, the best pure example of Belgian quad, Belgian Dark Strong that I've ever had is the St. Bernardus Abbott twelve. Um, very traditional Trappist beer straight from a Trappist brewery. Um, I've had a few really good variations. Deschutes makes a really good one. Um, Bellwoods out of Toronto, Ontario makes a uh, Brett barrel aged Belgian quad, mm-hmm. which is nothing like this, but absolutely fantastic. It's got more of a funky taste to it from the it bur- does. Bur- funky fresh. But it's not. Brett has that real barnyardy flavor, but it's sweet enough that it masks that a little, so it doesn't have that like horse blanket. Like it doesn't taste like you're chewing on a barn. Wah, wah. That's a shitty henchman. Mm-hmm. Where, where... I feel like that joke would have been better, but like, oh, I always say things like that. If you had seen him do it at least once right. before, yeah. You guys just had the three philosophers quad recently, right? Yes, that's yeah. also that, a good one. Yeah, I I, I enjoyed like that, that one more than my compatriots did. Yeah, yeah, I didn't but care for that one. That really. is all right. All right, well, like... we both said they liked my beer, so I yeah. feel good about yeah. myself yeah. now. So this is dry ice, right? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yes. Again, something's just not put away. <laughs> Also, where is the chick? Wherever she is, she's very dead, but also very you, clean. You see her later, because I was thinking about that. I'm like, you because you saw. The woman in the bathroom get killed, but that wasn't the mm. original where. Because originally I thought that, like, oh, 
she was in the bathroom and got killed and they body swapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you see her much, much later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I was I was right. inquiring about the lady who got dishwashed. Killed. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, where did she go? Yeah. Well, but before the podcast, I was talking about that. Excuse me, but but going back to the the three philosophers, I want to age that beer. Mm-hmm. It's meant to be aged. I, yeah. A I lot think... of a lot of quads are are meant to be aged, meant to be cellared. This is brutal. Yeah. yeah. Obligatory oh. bone to pick with the, you joke. Yeah. The lighting. <laughs> Makes it not as brutal as it could be because you don't see like right. blood fountain, yeah. and it's kind of dark, so you don't see a lot of. Stuff. It's not quite as gross what? as it could be. But... Was, is he going for a gun? Yes. No. Yeah. I just all well, my hands are really dirty from touching that guy. They really hot. Clean. A lot of the other deaths that happen in this movie until he gets a gun later. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the deaths that happen in this movie are they're not accidental, but they're not like purposefully like. Like yeah. he's, he's like, I am going to kill you now with this thing. In like, the process often, of fending them off, he they kills die. them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Except that guy who he literally puts a bone through his neck. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is my very different movie ten years from now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's um have you guys ever read Neuromancer? Nope. Nope. Um Neuromancer is one of the very famous cyberpunk um novels. One of the very first ones. There's a scene where one the character who's like a hacker is like communicating with this AI and he's walking through a um, airport, and like a phone, like there's like, there's the whole like wall of phones, and like the phones start ringing like as he's walking by them, and that's not a scene you can really do anymore. Nope. Yeah, because even though it's like a futuristic tale, there's no cell phones in it. Oh, she Ryan, did, there's your dead. She oh. goes, I knew where she was. No, I was concerned oh, about the oh, black haired lady. Dead, where, yeah. uh, the the terrorist the, lady, the henchwoman, hench, yeah. Hench wench. Now, interestingly enough, every time I I go back to Hawaii, I'm still amazed to find uh, public. Telephones there, really? They have. They are like not, like a Seven like Eleven. They are abundant throughout the islands. Huh. One of my friends was just in uh, California, like Los Angeles area, and she said I mean, they're all over the airport. She took a bunch of pictures with them. Like, hmm. I think I saw some when I was in Japan. Yes, but they were all like modern. Like you can just swipe your credit card at them, not like coin operated stuff. So to modernize that scene that you were talking about, Max, you, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you wouldn't have pay phones necessarily, but if it was a crowded corridor or walkway, you could have people's individual cell phones ringing in proximity to the character, right? Yeah, in an attempt but to I mean, that. that implies that the people would be trying to answer, but this is more of the AI trying to communicate with I the mean, main character. But, I but that is, yeah, like a, a modern equivalent would be like maybe TVs changing or... I like I, I think I like Ryan's idea of every person he walks by their phone starts ringing. Mm-hmm. So like it's it's even more of a subtle effect at that point. Like he's walking and he keeps looking and phones are ringing and then if you break out into a run and all the phones start ringing like mm-hmm. where he's okay, running. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would actually be a cool scene to see. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I kill people and make jokes. Right. I feel like his accent is a lot more subtle in this movie than than I've heard it before. Well, yeah, by this point, he's been <clears throat> yeah. doing films in America for 10-plus years, so he's gotten used to, I presumably, doing um, English-speaking roles. Hmm. So, But as we've discussed before, Jean-Claude never had, like, the comedy years mm-hmm. that, like, Schwarzenegger had. Right. And yep. um, I recently watched the pilot for Jean-Claude Van Johnson, which is um, Jean-Claude Van Damme is a retired actor, but he's also a retired, like, special forces guy. So he hmm. goes, like, back to the game or whatever where he's an actor, but the acting is, like, the cover for him going and doing, like, spy agent shit. So, like, he goes to Bulgaria to film this terrible movie, and he's, like, stopping a heroin trade while he's there. Sounds it's very, very meta as far as, like, it knows, like, the jokes that it's making. So I don't know if it's in the same vein of like the comedy years because it's it's clearly like a comedy action show. Yeah, but, but it's less like I am kindergarten cop. Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not twins. Kinder- yeah, 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 it's not that kind of comedy stuff. So. Well, I mean, speaking to that, even as recently as I mean, I guess this movie's a decade old, if not more. At this Oof. point. This but, movie? No, 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 no. Expendables. Oh. He refused to be in the original Expendables movie because he said he was still a serious actor and wasn't going to take his career in that direction right. yet. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then 
speaking of which, if any if anybody listening to this hasn't actually seen the original Expendables, it's That's an me. incredibly good action movie. Oh yeah, movie. one and two are great. So, yeah. so one is a good action movie, but two is as silly and absurd as I thought one was going to be. Right. Yeah. yeah. One is actually just a like incredible. Yeah, it's just a legit action, action movie. movie. It's so, is, so is good. Is it kind of like Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two, where Evil Dead One is just a great horror movie? Well, Evil Dead Two is a good combination of ridiculousness I, and horror. I, I think you can probably make that 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 comparison afterwards. But what Ryan talks about it is is really important there. Like they right. they marketed Expendables as there was going to be like this like this just like cheesy like over cheesy, the top exactly. action movie, and it's not. At yeah, it's, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember like the promo stuff where they had the the list of all the actors, and it was like on screen kills or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's it it's a lot more a lot more straight laced than that. Yeah, it's it's really straight laced. The second movie is actually pretty straight laced, mm. um, but, but they just do ridiculous things. Yeah, in. like it, it, I mean, no one's gonna be like it's not. Um, oh god, what's that crazy gun movie? Equilibrium. Uh, no, no. Kill 'em all. <laughs> Uh, with Clive Owen? With Clive Owen. I like that movie. Yeah. It's not that parody. movie. That's shoot 'em up. That's shoot 'em oh, up. Shoot 'em up, yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. it's not shoot 'em up and that kind of ridiculous, but like it's it's very much the, you know, last action hero swinging mm. from ropes and that kind of stuff you'd expect yeah. out of everybody. Oh, okay. Is what it is. You know, there's a fight in the airport and like they fight their way through the entire airport. Yeah. Like mm. that kind of stuff. Whereas the one the first one's much better. Yeah. This is a interesting Did anyone else scene? get a Black Hawk down feeling from this scene? Mm. Eh. In that it contains a helicopter, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a helicopter with a bazooka, and they have to like swerve, and people fall from it and die. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a LAW, um, which is a Vietnam era light anti armor weapon, actually. Oh yeah, the, yeah, a law. Yep. So, part of this that was odd to me is like that's not a combat zone, so there's really no reason not to just you know get really close to the roof and kind of let them hop yeah. off. Like I don't know why they have to rappel down. <laughs> Also, <laughs> this guy makes, like, what, a dozen kills from rooftops with a bazooka in this movie? Yeah. Why aren't there snipers looking at rooftops? I don't know. Also, LAWs don't just explode randomly. And this guy goes flying. Yeah. You know how far that is? Yeah. Look at where the, where the he building is. He was over is. the yes. top, and then he was, like, <laughs> 500 feet off the edge. But we're, we're getting too much into the physics. Strong, yeah. strong headwinds there, guys. I don't, I don't know. think they were really concerned with. No. <laughs> he went, no. like... He's a quarter mile from where he was before. <laughs> I want shrimp. Mm. Yeah. That well, looks really good. Who, I was just thinking that, too. Shrimp that, is always good. Who? Yeah. That's like At any uh, even time, you could be like, shrimp, popcorn, or pickles. I'd be like, give it to me now. <laughs> that's like the uh, the scene in the first <laughs> Matrix when they're eating the steak at that steakhouse. Oh, yeah. And that steak looks amazing every time I see it. I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to be eating that steak. Yeah. I want Matrix steak. Yeah. Even if it is fake. Mm. Yes. That's the whole purpose of that scene. Mm -hmm. Unrelated. So this is an interesting point mm -hmm. of contention that you have brought up to me before, Stephanie, but I've never actually had you explain. Why isn't final? Why isn't Armageddon Grand Crew a Belgian quad? So technically, Grand Crew and quads are very similar Belgian styles. Grand Crew is kind of what they called beers. That, because remember, they didn't have that term quadruple. And Grand so, Cru is supposed to be the term for like your best beer of yes, the brewery. Mm -hmm. Your best beer, your strong beer, that kind of thing. So quadruple is, is it's not an American construction, but it's almost an American construction. Um, and the same thing with like a, a beer in Belgium that is a Grand Cru that is a, I mean, you could have a Grand Cru that was a light beer, a dark beer, either one. The same goes for a quadruple. You could have a light colored beer that a Belgian would call a quadruple, but the American construction of the idea of a Belgian quad is it's the dark beer. Mm. So same with double, triple, it's it's all, you could go to Belgium, like I said, they don't like labels there. They just, this is my beer. Mm. But we put this label on, that's a double, it's a darker beer, it's a medium strength, that's a triple, it's a light beer, it's very sweet, it's a higher ABV. Mm -hmm. We like our untapped badges. We like to categorize things. We do like our untapped badges. If, if there is one thing nerds love, it's to make lists and check things off of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For context, Armageddon Grand Crew is one of the beers we've had on the podcast. Right. Exactly. From a local brewery called Dragonmead. Yes. That is, I believe, your favorite Grand Crew our quad that we've had. Yes. But mm -hmm. not one of my favorites. Yes, I like that one a whole lot. Yeah. It's okay. It's... 
it's very I, f- I find it very alcoholic in the like the burning the burningness taste I guess the warmth the warmth I get from it but it, then again when we did that episode it was like 10 a.m. on a Sunday <laughs> that is true so mm-hmm. do you get that out of this though the alcohol burn at the end a little bit because um, I get a that little bit yeah I get it compared to the first version of it which is around the nine percent which is where I wanted it I don't feel like it had that that astringence at the end quite as much with that boozy burn on yeah. it and this one i think does and here we have a great zamboni scene. so how this long is hold on so chronologically how long has this dude been tooling around on the zamboni dead for the other guy to have run into the van and be like sir we have a problem <laughs> and then for them to all get in their cars and drive to this location i think we've established the fact that the actual chronological timeline of this movie despite the fact that they're giving it to us on right. screen yeah. in bold <laughs> subtitles every couple minutes is really not something they concern themselves right. with. Second period, yeah. time out. <laughs> right. Yeah, this, you know, it would have been quite a feat if they actually would have done this movie in the t- time it takes to play a hockey game. Right. That still would have been. You didn't even want to watch this movie two for and a half two hours. hours. You <laughs> want to watch for two really and a half? wish it to be two and a half plus the uh, story before it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, they would have played with, actually played with the six, the, the period times like they were playing with yeah but there's so, also like the what is it, 15 I know. minutes in between periods 16 16 minutes in mm-hmm. between periods so that's another half an hour mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. i guess mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not far off that's not yeah this movie is 100 and, or if they would have done well, it 50, if they would have if they would have 20 cu- minute periods but you have three have breaks each period for commercials and, and the stop, commercial stop breaks are plays. each two minutes long right but you, you don't have any I, kind okay. of stop and plays yeah you don't have to I think my point was that you don't have to put play this down to the Bam! second here. Like, if you would have actually done it in a reason, like, play, done Mickey the game Rooney? portion in, a, right. in about it that time period. That, but that's also another, like, that would have been a good Stan Lee. <laughs> right. Yeah. Excelsior. Because they do a lot of stuff win. where, like, <laughs> like, this is all going on and they'll cut back and it'll be two minutes gone. Yeah. Also, yep. I, I don't believe he kicked that second door open. It looked no, like he just, just bounced right like off it. Yeah. Against it. That's supposed to be a front heel kick when you're trying to kick in a door. Mm. I bet John Claude Van Damme knows that. Of course he does. <laughs> I mean, he he what walks on his hands and like kicks open two doors at the same time while doing the splits down a hallway. Probably. That's what pile? Do you have any idea how hard just walking on your hands is? Not a for lot. Jay. It's, not for Jay. J Dog. There. It's a lot hard. Mm. Many much hard. I can walk on my hands for about five feet, <laughs> and that's taken about a year to learn. <laughs> Ah, uh-huh. ah, uh-huh. That's the second joke they've done with the uh, announcers on that, mm-hmm. or on things like that. Dun 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 dun. dun. Big cell phone. <coughs> <coughs> so, hmm, hmm. Hmm. What were you saying, Ryan? I, I was. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I was going to say I. <laughs> I'm not an expert on C4, but. I know a thing or two about ele- electricities. Okay. Give us some science. <laughs> I, c- cutting one of those wires would be sufficient. He doesn't need to cut them both on each block. But does he know that? Right, right. He's a fireman. Yeah, fire fire martial artist. Well, well, they do go to the thing that's like, how does he know what C4? He's like, well, he's, he's a decorated, um, you know, fire inspector guy. Who, who, decorated who, splitsman. Splitsman who investigates yeah. arson and stuff. So that's why he knows what it is and... S- splitsologist. Splitsologist. <laughs> Splitsman. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Also, the you tension. see him like after he cuts the lines, like hit a switch that turns the thing off. Yeah. yeah. So wouldn't that also just like turn it off? I don't know, but this is a great red herring. Yeah. Yep. I, I was yep. actually when I watched this the other day, I was complaining. Why are all b- remote detonators just blinky for no reason? I was like, oh, it's just, it's not. That was a nice little in yeah. the background. When okay, yeah. stop. Collaborate. It is with June. Them. The Stanley Cup finals are played in June. They would never, ever open Melon Arena in June. That ice would melt so fast. <laughs> Because I imagine that's not a fast opening shutter. That too. If you've ever been, I've never been to Mellon, but the Rogers Arena, we're at the Sky Dome, like we were talking about earlier. It takes a it while. It takes a long time to open it. It's a mm-hmm. process. And they don't do it mid game. It's either open when the game starts or it's not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
It seems modern, to be like it'd be like an end of the game celebration. Much more modern or more modern arenas can do it far, far quicker now. I mean, it's like I think some of the football stadiums that have been completed recently can open them in, in ten minutes or mm-hmm. less. So, but back when this was going on, yeah, the, those were like an hour long sequence. By the so. time that that dome opened, you would be skating on slush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, I think this arena had been around mm-hmm. since like nineteen eighty or something like that. Melon is old. Yeah, I forget exactly how old, but it was, it was one of the oldest remaining arenas we had. Um. It was Detroit and Montreal, Pittsburgh, one or two others were the last remaining from, like, the prior generation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where's Carl Winslow? I gotta jam those frequencies. Jam all the frequencies. Can we put the hyphen in? (laughs) Yes. Like the, the the other fireman is just looking around and looks yeah. like David Cross. <laughs> he does look <laughs> like David Cross. <laughs> <laughs> the Funke fireman. Yes, this is this is their fireman years. <laughs> All right. Gotta See, they think he's talking about the bombs. <laughs> yeah, he's that, talking about just kicking everyone's right. guns out of right. their hands. That maniac's gonna cut his own arms off. Yeah. Good shot. Again, just rooftop bazooka. Someone yeah. deal with this guy. Rooftop Bazooka is a good name for a band. <laughs> it is. It's got a lot of band names that come out of this show. You need to start keeping track of those. Mm-hmm. Let's drive yeah, on to the other side I of the like arena. Some of those for future beers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rooftop Bazooka. That's a good beer name, too. You're welcome. I could go with that. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I feel like that has to be something that's kind of like spicy, like a spice ale or something. Mm. Rooftop bazooka. Yeah, what would we? That needs to be a fairly. It needs to be a fairly loud beer. Yeah, Mm -hmm. fairly loud. I mean, the building's right there, sir. How are we gonna get there? Right. I need details. So we talked a little bit about how this is not Jean Claude Van Damme at times. This movie. I mean, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's just a lot of just him just being like, all right, there's a map. I guess I'm gonna go cut some wires. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's very. It's a lot less uh, like face your assaulters head on. Than... Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's not like your '80s action Jean Claude that everyone I think is used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more of just like this is an action movie. It's... This is a man who you know is a fireman. Mm-hmm. Every time there's a fight scene, it's because he has stumbled into finding a bad guy. Right. Yeah. It's not like seeking them out and like deliberately. Outside of the last fight, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. he's not ramboing it. Yeah. This is a hilariously stupid oh, yeah. thing he builds, by the way. Uh, I think you mean a hilariously awesome thing. <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, uh, stealthily operating the buzzsaw. Yeah. You know, no we were one just heard talking that. Talking at the beginning yeah. of this movie about how he just seemed like this kind of dumb, like, oh, I'm just gonna take my kids to the game and make them happy, and like, and then he comes up with something like this. Yeah. Dark gun. <laughs> Nothing about his character suggests to me that he would be. Walking by this thing and thinking, I'm gonna make this dart gun. Yeah. Make right. my own James Bond. Yeah, there, there are yeah. bombs. Yeah, there are bombs all over this building, but I'm gonna spend a lot of time making a one-use weapon. Yes. yes. Yeah. What are the chances? I mean, what could he possibly thinking be thinking? His chances are know. that he's going to be able to use this exact weapon. Mm-hmm. So as I was watching this earlier, I had a thought: Is it possible that Tommy Wiseau of the Room fame? It's just a failed clone of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, man. They have kind of similar yeah. accents. Like he hadn't been incubated long enough or something? Yeah. Like, like, I can uh, see that. And like, if you've seen Tommy Wiseau's arms like during the football scenes, he's pretty ripped. He, well, he, he's sinewy and emaciated. Uh, he has some muscle to him, certainly. But yeah. yeah. That's why I said like an unfinished clone. <clears throat> yeah. Agreed. I, it's a small thing, but when he flips the damn switch, shouldn't the blinking at least stop? That is literally know. what a switch is supposed to do. Stop blinking? It just, it just blinks differently. <laughs> Different blinks? Different blinks. Different blinks. Like how it's like a high stakes flip too. It's like, boop. I also don't understand why he has to hit anything on there. He literally took the explosive right. off the bomb. All it it's going to do is spark. It doesn't make any sense. He's a, a fireman. He, he wants to hear about yeah. that. Right. True. This is also a setup for a really great joke in this movie, of which there are a few. Yeah. yeah. So, 
here's <laughs> here's the thing. Going back to the Die Hard deal, like the reason why Die Hard is such a good fun movie mm-hmm. is because like the charisma of um, of Bruce Willis of Bruce Willis carries that movie, right? So they finally give him a chance to kind of be something other than like, I am the stoic firefighter mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. And he does a good job with it. Mm-hmm. But they don't yeah. give him enough room to breathe yeah. in this movie. Right. Yeah. And yeah. That's what makes, very, very, that's very tense. true. And that's what makes a lot of this movie, in my opinion, a little boring is that he's just kind of like guy walking around a, a yeah. hockey arena. Like mm-hmm. if he was funnier, cause he can be funny. They just showed yeah. him right there. They've like, got but, scenes. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I think this would have this movie would have been a His lot. His character is a little had a bland. Lot more reception to it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jean Claude Bland, damn, <laughs> yeah. yes. When he's yeah, so Jean. Yeah. Next year, <laughs> you're gonna be screwed up forever. Jean Claude Bland, damn. <laughs> yeah. So Jean, this is one of this movie flopped. It had a 35 million dollar budget, 68 million dollar box office. It mm-hmm. was more of a hit overseas mm. mm-hmm. and pretty negative reviews at the time, but. In the future, like no more now, the present, this is regarded as one of his stronger acting roles. Like he's more than just Kickman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I guess so. As as bland as his character is overall, it's acted really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that's what I mean. He's he just does really well with. He's not given much. Right. And a, he does a good job with it, but that's mm-hmm. not enough to save it. Right, right. And I guess that's what I meant by like the in the setup for this whole sequence. <clears throat> Prior to the like the the act of terrorism going off, mm-hmm. um, embezzlement, the whitest of crimes. Yeah. going back to our very first episode. Like the there's Flintstones. there's some jokes they throw around. There's some fun there. You mm-hmm. know, like the cookie thing is funny. Yeah. Um, you know, talking to the talking about the hat is funny. Like all that kind of stuff is 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 good. It's there. You know, and and they don't carry that through. The scenes with the with the villain, he's chewing on the scenery, which is good. Which means almost back. too much sometimes. I'll I'll admit. I mean that speaks back to um, oh god, what's the villain's name from Die Hard? Gruber. 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 Yeah, I mean you know Hans Gruber is this ridiculous villain who's like. R.I.P. Alan Rickman. Yes, you're missed. So it, it just doesn't. You have to. You have to have him to carry these scenes because otherwise it's just mustache twirling bad guy in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on the opposite side, you need kind of a, a wise cracking. Hero. Right. Otherwise, it's just a guy walking around a hockey arena. Yeah, yeah. But that might be like you know, at this point, all the action stars were into their comedy phase, and I could maybe see Jean Claude being like, "I am not doing the jokes. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. do some jokes, but not right. all jokes." Right. And, and but then and, you have to have better action. Then yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that, that you gotta have if you're gonna carry the movie one way or another on the action from the action star purpose, he either has to be like over the top normal Jean Claude action, which is why mm-hmm. those movies kind of get carried a little bit in his yeah. early career, or he has to be charismatic, and they, yeah. they don't do either in this. Yeah. And when you think about it, there aren't really a lot of strong personalities in this movie. Like you got your there really villain, aren't no. You got you know Jean Claude as much as his his character allows him to be. But, I mean, what other character do you have that really has, like, Honest? you feel for the little girl? Yeah, she had a strong... I never saw this I did coming. not see this coming this at all. This was good. It is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I did so, not... It was so you, set up so nicely. Yeah. yeah. And you think about this it... This is how you do a good twist in a movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hallmark is way more twisted than, than Foss. Because yeah. Hallmark has been sending his own men in to die. Oh, just yeah, yeah. yeah. to the meat grinder. The only time I was like, those are all cardboard cutouts for the most part. By the way, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Obvious, obvious, <laughs> obvious screen is obvious. Yeah. But the only time I was like, what's going on was when he leaves and he says, "If I don't come back, tell my wife the gravy train stopped coming" or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. That doesn't make any sense unless you're pulling in a ton of money, which I assume, you know, as a higher up in Secret Service, you probably are. But, like, mm. in the. <laughs> when you when it's revealed that he's in on, like, the embezzlement, yeah. that makes a lot more sense because he's like, I'm probably going to get a shit ton of money from doing yeah. this. Yeah. But still, it was. It, it just makes this scene, like, really sinister. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you can tell he's, bad... he's been defending. Hmm. Um, Jean Claude Blandam's character, <laughs> yeah. like the entire, he was like, "Oh yeah, he's a he's a hero guy. You right. know, he, he's gonna be a problem or whatnot." So yeah, but it, it's such a it's such a out of left field twist. It's great. That, it's it's really good. good. Yeah, you can tell he's a bad guy because he has little buttons on his collar. Yeah, 
So, uh, Stephanie, you were talking <laughs> about other little buttons on other collar. personalities that are actually personalities. Actually, Andrew, the chef at the beginning, yeah. is yeah. one of the bigger ones. Yeah, and yeah. he's just... The knife. Yep. 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 Like, I wish he would have lived longer. Just to have just more to of them. see more from that character. I want to see yeah. him just take out some bad guys with yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, with a yeah, knife. Dude, just like, yeah. he, you know, like, he flips the knife and, and it comes yep. up on his hand or something you, like you'd that. You'd know he'd do it again later. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like he didn't need to die in yeah. that. This is... um. One, that guy is wearing colors that have nothing to do with any team in the arena, by it's the way. Yellow That's Penguin black. color. It's yellow and black. It looks purple. Oh, it's... Well, no, but okay, not the... Not his face. The hat. It's a it's, puck head. Right, it's green. No, it's not. It looks green. It's, it's green. That gray color has that greenish hue to it. Yeah, mm. I can see that. Like, when he, when they first cut to him, I mean, I get it's it's probably like a Packers supposed to be a first. Packers mm. fan, yeah. but, but like... Hey, we're in Freddy Krueger's brother. I was going to say, yeah. never sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> convenience <laughs> flashlight storage facility yes this is where he finds the velociraptor that's in the right in the basement. <laughs> gotta flip the switches to the breakers that's literally what he's doing he's flipping mm-hmm. switches yep. <laughs> that's what this movie needs is more more dark scenes yeah high yeah. stakes steam tunnel action I have another name variation for boring John Claude Van Damme. All right. Let's call him Jan Claude Bland Dam. Yes. Jan. Jan Claude. Jan Claude Bland Dam. We need I to replace to all think, the four names. I just keep trying to think like variations of this beer. Like right. if I bourbon barrel it, like mm. then what would it be? Right. Um, you son of a bitch. Yeah. No. Seems like you could just shoot him in the arms and disable this is him. Yeah, like just way. shoot him. Right. Yeah. Also, apparently he's made of gasoline. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because, like, he just goes up. Yeah. Here. I mean, woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> yep. And he's setting everything he touches on fire, also. Is. <laughs> is cocoa true. butter There's flammable? Death by variations of heat in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they have the roof open, so all the hockey players are going to die. Yeah, right? it's, yeah. How, it's, they melt with the ice, it's, right? It's, mm. Heat is a <laughs> heat is true. a strong is a big problem now in hockey. Yeah. But I honestly, I was expecting more hockey puns in this. Nah, ah! it is Kruger. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that speaks to the fact they haven't. It's not a jokey movie, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not trying to be funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, like going back to the, like the where this story came from, you know, the Philadelphia Peng- or Pittsburgh Penguins owner's wife being like, "I want to do Die Hard, die hard but in Pittsburgh hockey. in mm-hmm. hockey." Yeah. Well, there couldn't possibly be anything, you know, six feet further down this hallway. Let's turn around. Yep. No, no dead guys over there. Mm-hmm. Do you guys smell burning stuff? Nope. Yeah. Dead body inspection team. You know that cell phone's probably indestructible. Oh, for sure. That's the most believable part of this. <laughs> right. Because he pulled that out of his pocket when he was on fire. <laughs> yeah. And he's roaming. He's, oh, yeah. A bitch. Oh, the charges. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> but I haven't finished buying all my Christmas cards. Ah! Ah! Okay, no, he's like, you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think this is like the like the the peak of his ch- uh, scenery chewing. Is mm. this exchange right here? He's always drinking wine. Mm. If you were in charge of a terrorist cell as about embezzling money from the United States, wouldn't you be drinking wine all the time? Nope, scotch. Okay, I was Fair gonna enough. say that's that's the other side of it. I, I do like that she subtly nods her head yeah. like she's mm-hmm. counting. She's counting. Yeah. <laughs> she included me. <laughs> this is good. I will find you and I will kill you. Yeah. Fire guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to touch, 
catch the booze on the shelves back there, but I can't really see. There's a bottle mm-hmm. of Johnny Walker Black. Mm. Mm. I mean, pretty hard to miss that bottle. Mm. Yeah. So, what was what was this movie rated? This is R. This is R. Okay. Definitely R. And it's R because of the language in it, right? Mm, language some of the violence, and, uh, some probably of the, the, violence. The, the the chicken bone to the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I assumed it was R because I know they they drop a few f bombs in right. here. Mm. They don't. Yeah, they don't swear it's that not a much. Lot, though, yeah. Yeah. It, I if if you pull the f bombs from this. I would guess this would be like a modern PG-13. Pretty close. Yeah, you would get your one yeah. that you can get with PG-13. Yep. But, but yeah. There's nothing pervasive in the violence, and there's no no, n- n- no nudity. And I think that... I think because that, of the, that, like, the close-up on the headshots... Yeah, I mean, that kind of speaks to your your flop, though. Like, I wonder how much better this movie does if it's a PG-13 movie as opposed to an R movie. Because there's mm-hmm. nothing... Like, it, if you're gonna do an R, you should you know the, the idea of like doing a hard R. Yeah. Like if you're gonna be an R, you might as well be an R. Right. Yeah. Why be a soft R? Right. Well, then you go into like over the top action cat hair. Over well, the, how many the people top. expected that of this, this movie? This, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. In yeah. an R-rated you movie, assume. you know. So. This is a terrible sequence of lines. It by is the really way. bad. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll be honest. Uh, again, I I had never seen this movie before. I the result is a lot more civilized than I expected, for lack of a better term, for an action movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Clever girl. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Nah. No, I mean, like I'm not. I don't want this movie to be be crazy. R. I was just ta- I was making a discussion about it. Like it's no, it's, no. Yeah, I, I get I get you. You know the. I see the idea there of being, if you're going to be an R, you don't have to be, like, ridiculous or over the top, but you might as well get your R rating. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Earn it. Yeah, don't, because being a soft R is just take, cut a few things and become that PG-13 because you're going to open up the market way more for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So for a movie, for a movie that had a, had the budget that you talked about and for what this was, like, being an R movie, that was going to be tough to make that back. Yeah. Like I'm trying, like as I was watching this, I was trying to think, Aww. like, how much did they spend on like the licensing, <clears throat> um, to use like all the penguin stuff and to like shoot in this arena? Well, I'd imagine if it since it was well, they, I mean, how much did they save on that by they're in control of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that anyone see that old guy in the back? He he looked like freaking Cosgrove from Freakazoid. <laughs> So the coach looks really familiar, but I can't place yeah. him. So the um, the subtitles there say, "I don't think I could goal." Yeah, I think he does say that, but it sounds like no, go. He, also. I don't think I can go. Yeah, I I. I and that's the hockey. Watch. Like that's that you hear that a lot. Like he can't go tonight, or they, can, you know, that's like a that's it's what just, I yeah, assume it's a it sport. was. It's a it's sports hockeyism. Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I hope he said goal because that, I thought I he think said it's goal better. as well. But yeah. I like I will admit I've never heard. Just that term, I can't goal. Yeah. Used as a verb. Used as a verb, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that shot of just like his lower, the lower, lower profile. Jump. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, this movie occasionally does Why? interesting camera work, but. Why bother with touching the button? <laughs> Sparks. <laughs> Oh, this, this guy dude, looks like a Street Fighter villain. He does. Yeah. He also looks like he looks really out of place. Yeah, he does. like yeah. L.A. in the yeah. '80s. Sure, he looks like a tough young Reggie Fiamme from Nintendo. Does anyone know <laughs> oh, who that wow, is? Oh wow, yeah. No, I mean he looks like he's straight out of the Street Fighter movie. Mm. Yep. Well, the he's Balrog. he's yeah. He'd be a more appropriate Balrog. Yeah. Well, no, the, the no. guy was actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This... He didn't have the size, but he looked like him a lot in the face. Yeah, I do like this little action sequence here with him going down the stair with the, this is, the steps. This might be the, the most stairs. physically impressive thing he's done in, in the whole movie. Yeah, this isn't easy. Yeah. Particularly, that. I want to hope <laughs> yeah. that wasn't. I want to hope that was unscripted. Right. I want to hope that was an actual stumble. And I like how it was spread out enough Ow. that you could see that there were empty chairs, but it wasn't obvious the path yeah. he had to take. Yeah. Also. 
on the musical cues, this music sounds oh, this is really similar to the soundtrack for Killer Instinct. Um, the it's either the Saber Wolf theme or the Idol theme from Damn, that game. Ryan, that oh is wow, a deep ass cut. Yes, that is yeah. yeah. Again, I, still... I mean, I'm over here like, wow, the music is working for me. And yeah. he's like, this harkens back to... I, I still have that... arcade game. Yep, I still have that soundtrack, the disc. It came with the uh, the SNES game. I I think it's the shirt on that villain that makes yeah, it look so it's, ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's pretty like absurd. I was saying, like, if it was in a warmer... I mean, it's June. Okay, yeah, but still, it just doesn't... It doesn't feel <laughs> like what a guy in the Midwest would be wearing in June. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. I like the idea there that that Chris Chelio skated down the length of the the ice and then slap shotted it in past the the hey, goalie. Hey, Chris Chelios at like forty seven was pulling a, a stationary bike into the sauna and biking for forty five minutes after games on game day. So he's not not I'm saying he's not athletic. <laughs> that's just not his game. No, it, that's that's true. That's also not Chris Chelios in that scene. That's well, fine. They called him that. They though. called him Chris Chubb. <laughs> they refer to a lot of players that are not actually in this yeah. movie. <laughs> I I do like that shot when they come back. For a second, I I wasn't really concentrating on that scene, and I thought that maybe he swapped just. Like, he was just. It was yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme like just laying, laying there, the bot, yeah. like lying in his spot. That's what I originally yeah. thought. This to me is a very uncharacteristically goofy pull for this movie. Yes. It's odd. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 they set it up a little bit with being that when he's like, oh, I used to play yeah. back yeah. up in Canada. I remembered that this happened, but I thought there was more of a, like, reason for it. Like, when I watched the movie again the other day, like, I, it, like it just kind of happens. Like, he happens to be in the locker room. Yeah. It's yeah. a All convenient, right. like, ploy. And for some reason, I had remembered it as something more like... Like he, I also thought it was toward the very end of the movie. Like this was like his, you know, glorious moment at the end. And, yeah. and really, yeah, there's, there's still like, like a good half and half. There's yeah. a lot of movie left. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, like bitch. He, we ain't done. Yeah. Yes. Super uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Like even just being they, like, um, on the ice like that. Put goalie skates on him, and he tried to move in them for like a minute, and he walked right back into the room and was like, "Take these off of me." He's wearing tennis shoes in this entire scene. Oh wow, well, that's why they don't show his feet. Yeah, then, eh? that's awesome. So the the other side of this sequence is that, like, okay, he goes into the locker room, and they look, and they're like, oh, look, there's a guy on the athletic table, and he doesn't feel good. And then apparently they don't notice the dude just clomping around in goalie pads, <laughs> like, walking out the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Like, there was nothing about this swap that forced him onto the no. ice. No. And the other thing I don't understand is then they go to sudden death, and he's no longer in the game. So what goalie comes back? You can't put in... If you take out a goalie and you put in your backup, you can then put in the original goalie again, but you can't take him out again. You're done then. You're <laughs> oh, stuck gets, with that no, guy. he gets thrown out, though. That must be the way that... Yeah. See, I don't know. It. Yeah, maybe there's yeah, rules. He, he punches the dude. Whee! Whoop! Maybe in that kind of situation, yeah. you're allowed to put your backup back in. Yeah. I don't know. I just know in he, general. Because you know, he's trying to look for a way to get off of right. the ice. Yeah. And see, that's why soccer's better. Because when you come off the ice, you're just off. Uh, yeah. you're the game, you're off. If soccer was on ice, that'd be an interesting sport. And even what a lot of, so- a lot of hockey line. players actually uh, actually do do uh, mess around with a soccer ball. On yeah, ice hmm. to warm up. They warm up. Yeah, two touch. Yep. Huh. A lot of them play soccer in the summer too. A lot of the Europeans go back home over the summer and play like soccer. It's not like professional, but it's enough. Yeah. On that verge. In inline hockey, they play a lot of inline hockey too. They go home for the summer and play inline hockey in Europe. It's a really awkward sound. Yes, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a very awkward save too. He's he's all not the flying bean. That's, that's yeah. like true '90s butterfly goalie right yeah, there. Yeah, like I have a slinky for a. Spine. Or I'm sorry, not butterfly goalie stand up. Good, yeah. Just gonna flop around everywhere. Should have knuckle pucked it to the it. left or to the right. No butterflying. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't fall to the ground with it straight down. Yeah. Yeah. Like I grew up watching. Yeah, all like, of his teammates get that close to him, and nobody has like a wait a minute. Wait a minute, yeah. yeah. And no one notices like this. You have all your teeth, <laughs> imposter. <laughs> what? 
he doesn't bring this up. I mean, I know the building's like exploding later, right. but like right. this whole sequence between father and son isn't brought up ever again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sweet mercy, you would think that this movie was over in four minutes. Yeah. You would be wrong. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, you know, I mean, like, I I had the, the the good grace of, like, growing up watching hockey when the wings got good again. Yeah. Like, I went to both of the Stanley Cup parades in 97 and 98, and, like, I could always remember, like, the goalies. Everyone was always talking about, like, how ridiculously good all the goalies were back in the 90s and whatnot. So... But you you take those goalies now and you put them in net against the the, the guys that are playing forward now and that old style of goal. Yeah, like I feel like it's you know you don't hear the same. You know, I, I guess praise. I guess because the games changed. I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, also with with NHL pl- like playoffs, you can tell who's going to go far typically by who has the hot goalie going yeah. into the, going in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll have teams that go in or that are just garbage otherwise, and mm-hmm. they and but they have the they hot squeak goalie in and, and they have a hot goalie and it's just. Yep. Well, look at what two seasons Aww. ago, uh, when uh, Montreal wow. was leading the league because Carey <laughs> Price was so hot, and then Skate to the face, he gets hurt, and they don't even make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little disappointed now that Jean Claude Van Damme has hockey skates on that he didn't do like a hand, a whirling handstand, like spinning bird kick Chun Li thing, and just decapitate like 19 people. <laughs> Too, it's too much for this movie. It's too, too, yeah. much, it's too much personality. My, my was, disappointment like, is was, still real. It was yes, enough to kick the guy in the face with a hockey with a skate on. Yep. No, I wanted more too. I figured when he kicked the guy, like you'd see, yeah. like, you, you did see a little bit of a gash, but it wasn't like it, it wasn't to the throat or something. Obviously gory, because it was like, um, you know, I'm an evil Doctor right. Evil scar. Yeah, you evil know, evil watching scar. how long it takes him to get out of those pads. Like I played oh, yeah. hockey for a few years. Like it takes a long time to get into those pads. Mm. I don't know how he did it when he's being chased down by these guys. It's oozy time. Yeah. I was saying, well, I was saying at that moment he wasn't being chased by anyone, but we're about to see an extra long gunfight. When I got my Uzi, you guys butt- lose. That's, That's a good butt shot for Jean Claude <laughs> right there. As required in most of his movies. Yep. No, he was being chased by somebody when he was put when he was putting when the he was hockey putting pads it on. on. Yeah, they were chasing yeah. him. Well, I was, I was taking it off is what I meant. Yeah. They were chasing like, him. Well, just... no, he kicked the guy in the face. And there's two guys, And then though. there was the jiggly door. Yeah, there's oh. two guys. Spent it's amazing thing. that Yager is still playing somewhere right and now. And well. Yeah. When he was with Florida, he, like, led the team in scoring for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, it's a dun. good. This is a cool, a cool sequence here with the mirrors. I do, I, I do like that. Really yeah. Good. Oh, gun. Yeah. Like an ugly Lance Henriksen. <laughs> Ow. I thought it was a baseball fan for a second. I'm yeah. like, um, wrong gym. Okay. <laughs> You know, my greatest fear at the gym, like, every day is I'm going to turn with the barbell and, like, whack someone in the face. I'm really disappointed that that didn't just happen. Mm, yeah. That, that May West comment was very odd right. also. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say that your greatest fear at the gym is, you know, working out. <laughs> and then suddenly Jean-Claude Van Damme storms in and shoots you up with an Uzi. Yeah. I mean, I've oh, never man, thought of that back. fear before, but. <laughs> or the uh, the hip abductor, adductor. Yes. Which, <laughs> which is everyone's greatest fear because right. you, there's no way to look. Appropriate there is on that. Machine. Absolutely no way to <laughs> nope. do that exercise and not look. No. Yeah, it's like every repetition is an unsolicited invitation. <laughs> like, oh. oh, more butt. I mean, it's not a bad butt. No, it's mm, a. No. Dude's got some cheeks. Yeah. This is another. God, this would hurt. Oh. <sighs> what is that device? That's a rivet. Yeah. Thing. Oh. But like Back another the sequence bottom of here, the skate to the skate. He, he mm-hmm. doesn't kill that guy. No, he just rips yeah. his hand, and hits him in the face with an. Yeah. Uh, this Must sequence, catch the end of the game, yeah. makes no sense whatsoever. Like, all right, spoiler alert: this guy scores here. Um, <laughs> why would they just be like, you know what? Our dastardly plan didn't take into account overtime, yeah. right. so screw it. We'll just keep going. Like. Aww. Just blow the building up. I mean, I know he doesn't want to blow up, but like they didn't do what he was supposed to do. He killed young Mike Pence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. So it, it just 
Why? Why would you? And where did that guy come from? Like he's they show him and he's it on was, a breakaway. And it suddenly was literally a breakaway, and then suddenly somebody caught up. Yeah, and was facing the other direction. Sudden death! Sudden death! So, hockey question: Playoffs are the only time when it goes to sudden death. I was no. It- Yes? Yes. Yes. Now it is. Well, playoffs has always been the only time they've gone to sudden death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I was just going to make another complaint mm. about this movie. Yes, because is... I know we've been to a couple of hockey games and you're like, I fucking hope this isn't going to, to a shootout. I hate shootouts. But in the regular season, at the end of a hockey game, if it's tied, you have a one minute intermission while the players stay on the bench and they come out and they play a five minute overtime and then if there's no victor in the five minute overtime three on three they go to a a shootout which don't even get me started and this is 1995 so there were no shootouts but it's irrelevant because in the playoffs it's sudden death it's 20 minute periods until somebody wins so it's not one minute between periods. It's the full intermission between periods. Does no one on either of these teams go back to the locker room and say, why are there bullet holes riddled everywhere? <laughs> they show them on the bench My like skates. they just stay on yeah. the bench, but that is not the way hockey works. Narratively convenient. But... Yeah. yeah. Also, there's another reason why soccer is better, because you can have ties. I, well, okay. In the Stanley Cup playoffs, I miss ties in the regular season. I don't right. see any reason why there shouldn't be ties in the regular season. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. you Shootouts tie. are stupid. Points for losing are stupid. Oh, you took them to overtime. I don't care. You still lost. Yep. So this begins the sequence of him doing something that's just inexplicable. Yeah. yeah. There is literally no, no reason to get reason. on the roof. I, I feel like it's one of those like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, if we got on the roof? That's it what is. I mean. Like they were like, we need to use the roof somehow because I feel like this is their John McClane crawling through the air vents. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, well, I, get, I get why they did it. And this building is ninety percent rivets. But the <laughs> <laughs> this is the true story. The uh, yeah, Games Workshop would be proud of how many rivets there are on this. <laughs> um, the the problem with it is that they show it later when he like goes down onto the into the box on the on the spotlight if you look there's seats above that box like he could have just gone up the, in, inside of the stadium and thrown the bomb down and jumped oh, yeah. into the roof and been even more stealthy than he's trying to be right now like, this, is even if, this is true this is true but however, goes off however hitch, he has lost his official fire inspector uniform and now he can I blow ass- things up <laughs> yeah no 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 but but still, the ushers would probably would not let him in to a section of which he does not have a ticket for, which he does not have a ticket for, because he's working. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just trying to like. That's dis- I, I, dis- I, I don't buy plan. that. <laughs> what? I don't buy that. Okay. <laughs> Spider Dam. Spider Dam. In what world is being a firefighter something that <clears throat> prepares you to do something like this? Yeah. I don't. I need more. Like I, I understand that it's just you know like a dumb action movie, mm-hmm. but I, I'm unconvinced that he used to be a really good firefighter is enough to sell me on. He can climb the rivets to get on top of Melon Arena. Why did Why did you say unconvinced like an Irish mother of three? <laughs> I'm unconvinced. It's that I just spent three days in Toronto, so I'm, I'm kind of I've yeah. got that like I was in Cabbage Town. I've got that Canadian like Irish Canadian thing happening. Nice. I I felt the same I mean, way. I mean, like I waited here. for them to, when they were pulling up his stats, be like, oh, this guy was in the army. Yeah. yeah something he was like some that. kind like, of like... Honorable discharge from the army, yeah, and well, now you know, he's fire, a fireman. Fire special yeah. services. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> fire I don't know. <laughs> but it says here he can do like, the splits. This is not a firefighter thing, SWAT. <laughs> this is not yeah. a thing a normal human can do. Right. Even if you are a firefighter and you're in good shape, and you're like, that's not a thing like... Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder Winter. how much of the fact, like, they just banked on the fact that the audience watching it is like, well, that's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, yeah, right. I'm sure there's part of that. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I really did the same thing. I kept waiting for them to be like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know, yeah, we were going to find out like. his secret past. Yeah. yeah. Very slow roll down. <laughs> 
that guy is clear. Like that's a bad special <clears throat> effect right there. Yeah. That's just a James terrible Ellsley overlay. A Wii yeah. when he was sliding down the... Yeah. Also, that's not how you play Doom. You don't just shoot the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> what if they're the invisible demons? Mm. Yeah. IDDQD? I... IDKFA. IDKFA, man. <laughs> man, remember when cheat codes were like ingrained into your subconscious? Abacab. Yes. Abacab. It's the blood code. Blood code. Combat. And if you want the debug code for the same game, it's duller to down up left, left, A, right, down. <laughs> I really wanted that guy to be taking steps whenever the music was going off. That would be good. You wanted him to Hanna Barbera it? Yes. So do you think this maybe just like is a uh, time lapse photo of it opening? It's got to be. Yep. Yep. Wee. So I. Five hours later. Five, five, five yeah, hours later. Honestly, and again. Like... All cutouts. Yeah. I can't not see them. So when I was watching this... <laughs> <laughs> when I was watching this the other day, um, this scene legit gave me vertigo. Like, I've got a real thing with it's, heights. It's very and, tense. And I was just like, eh, my stomach kept tightening up. Well, it's because you know this is a real building. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah, that looks really good right yeah. there when he's yeah. hanging off like that. There are so many weird things that out of nowhere this movie does like well. This, this, this shot. Out. And then, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Like, that was one continuous shot there from the game going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. I mean, that was obviously a screen. And then you have right. Jurassic Park green screen. Mm-hmm. Ah! Yeah. Like, a Velociraptor is going to jump up and bite him. <laughs> it's the same thing. Into the drop tile ceiling. Ah. I want him to fall on the ice. Yeah. That's too but much I, I'm, for I'm, I am, uh, I'm very glad with, with what does fall on the ice right. later. <laughs> In what <laughs> might be the slowest sequence ever for yes. anything falling. Right. Ever. Yes. <laughs> but I love every second And a very it. just hilariously uniform descent. Yes. Wee. <laughs> I actually kind of feel for this guy right here. That can't that that top of that light must be so hot. Yeah. Well, yeah. not even that. Just the absolute terror of being so high up, making an attempt and failing. This is my worst nightmare. Oh, guys, stunt. he died so suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the red button. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> again, die hard. Yep. Yeah. So again, one I or to speak to that, like one, this isn't stealthy. Even if the, everybody wasn't, was paying attention to the game, no, it would have been stealthy. I also expected him to jump in and, like, go into the Like, through the, box, the screen? Like, through the... No, no, mm. like, jump down. Oh, and, like, Indiana and, like, Jones? Yeah. Indiana Jones yeah. into the box. But, no, he jumps down, and then there's more. <laughs> there's we, we need to draw this out. We need, <laughs> like, another five he, minutes. He has, to, he has to walk a little bit more before he mm -hmm. gets there. We need this, we need this uh, screen to explode more. So what exactly is in this freaking bottle, do you think, Max? Do you think it's just that fucking Carolina Reaper sauce? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Um, okay, so look. It's... When they cut, there's people sitting above yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It goes up so high. Like, my friends, when I did not go with oh, them that's bad. when they went to the Stanley that's... Cup Finals game here, yeah. they were sitting in the very last row, and you can touch the ceiling. Like, you yeah. reach up, and you're, like when you stand, uh, like you guys, you tall people, would yeah. have to, like, crouch forward to not hit the ceiling. Yeah. It is water and some like kind of alkali. Because when you yeah. when you mix, like, potassium, like pure potassium with water, right. it creates a reaction like that. How did he know he would need that? He had the plan. He had a plan. Up. That's uh, why he went on the roof. Okay. But that's why I'm complaining that he didn't. He could have gone go like above them and been like, aha! Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been way, like, way Like, faster. right as, like, the buzzer went off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Good job listening, kid. Yep. Mm. I so wanted the end, cred the end credits of this movie just to be that kid still, sitting still in the chair. The chair. <laughs> okay, okay. So, question on that thought. So, like, as a stinger, just revealed at the end? Or... Behind the entire Empire, credits entire roll. Credits, like, <laughs> looking around and the credits are going by. Have to start putting together some of our own movies, you guys. Yeah. 
I don't mind the child actors in this movie. No, they're pretty good. No, they she, they're fine. Good. I mean, she's fine. She just gets a bad set of lines to deliver yeah. in yeah. one sequence. Come on, Mr. Vice President. Let's get out of here. Okay, random guy. Yeah. I trust you. Yeah, if this Everyone's was out of different directions. If this was a, a Gerard Butler has fallen movie, he'd be oh, all God. like shit dog, fuck, let's blow this shit, fuck. Yeah. Bad lighting, torture. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> It really bothers me that no one wins the Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I know. Jean-Claude Van Damme wins the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. They should just give it to him for saving the vice president. All right. Okay. So when you see the reveal here, yep, this looks like Stephanie's dad. No, it. Okay, I don't know what Stephanie's dad looks like, but it looks exactly like Richard Keel. Hmm, I don't know who that I don't is. The guy Richard who played Keel. Jaws in... Oh, seven. I've I've only seen him or the guy as Jaws. Oh or, no, he's in Happy Gilmore. He's the guy. Yeah. The, the he big guy. Yeah. The big he guy. Like I can Gilmore. see that. Yeah, he looks exactly like him. But the the thickness and fullness of the mustache is hey, a lot like Tom Yates. It's downtown Novi from today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When I saw him, I was okay. Like, He's just cosplaying on his way out of the building. (laughs) That's literally what he's doing. (laughs) Go get your son. What's up? That's that would be really creepy. Yeah, Yeah. I've been in I've been in a hockey arena when it's been empty. Yeah, and it's 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 weird. weird. It's 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 cavernous. It echoes. Like, have you ever gone to the grocery store when it's like half empty? Like the shelves are empty. Yeah, I worked at Target, so I did that for like a mm-hmm. job. So yeah. yeah, it's it's disconcerting. Yeah, it's like something is not right here. Yeah, you did good, Jimmy. So, yeah, I'm Chad. Okay, Listeners bye. of the podcast, I'm passing around a photo to show what Stephanie's dad looks like. <laughs> okay, I can see that. A bit of a stretch, but the, yeah. not unreasonable. Yeah, more Richard Keel. It is more Richard Keel. And McLean. I mean, or whatever. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> Yippee ki yay penguins. <laughs> this is a nice poll about how she I- IDs him. Right. Yeah. But she's wandering away from him, speaking as quietly as possible while yeah. she does it. Like, what? Yeah. There. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I agree, but I'm also going to say she's probably kind of in a bit of shock. Yeah. That's true. I guess I can't really judge the, yeah. you know, like six year old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can. You're just terrible for it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm terrible for many things. Why no. not add another one? Welcome <laughs> to the club. Yeah. Hey, other secret Dallas service stars. Like, secret service agent who I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just, just take my kid, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they probably were like, "Hey, who likes hockey? Where's some please hockey just show up." Yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're not providing you your um costumes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a weird shot. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, someone who knows how helicopters work. Mm. Yep. <laughs> dun, dun, but he dun, does look, look like, um, in his dis- in his cosplay as a hockey fan, he does look like an elderly hockey player. Mm. Like from he the does. 70s. He does. He looks yeah. absolutely. Like he's got like the frame. No. And the hair. The hair and the mustache. Yep. So this is even his John McClane outfit right here. Yeah. The white, the yeah, white the, bloody the white t-shirt. Bl- yeah. In, in the uh, upcoming just fall of this helicopter, it's... Pi- Why is this a button? <laughs> right. Like, that's a yoder- I'm sorry to No, it's fine. Yeah. Why is that a button? <laughs> Why is there a floor disappears button? They're, they're all, wrong lever! <laughs> yeah, I mean... Why? I, I would be fucked here. I would die. Yeah. I am not climbing up that. Yeah, I'd be a dead, dead person. That's... She oof. aged like 30 years in that angle. I don't get it. Well, bad, it's a bad, bad screen. Bad, yep. They could have yeah. done much better than that. That was yep. poor. Yep. Every time we see one of those scenes, and I think I've told, I might have told this on the podcast, and if so, I apologize. When we, when I was a kid, we got to go to, I went to um, either Disney or Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. I think it was MGM Studios, and they did the green screen trick. Oh, right, right, oh, right. And um, my dad got picked to be the guy who, like, fell from the Eiffel Tower in one of the old, um, one of the old Hitchcock movies. Right. Oh, okay. And so... They did that, and, and it was awful looking, looking back on it. And every time I see green screen, that's all it reminds me of. It's <laughs> my dad falling to his death. <laughs> that's funny. 
I wanted to make a joke like, better luck next season, or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Yeah. But again, all the uh, all the I, good I, ice I, puns I were used really up. I wanted um, Powers Booth's character to be a big hockey fan. <laughs> that, <coughs> that angle where he like brings her head down and kisses her on the cheek is like way more intimate of a pull than like it, it's not gross or anything but like mm. that's a kind of a pull that you i would i would suspect to see with him with like the girlfriend that we thought yeah. he was going to have later earlier uh-huh. on in the movie like the i'm gonna pull your head closer to me before i go do this not like yeah. get up and like kiss her as a kid on the cheek and go off this is brutal yeah, yeah. yep we Just- Rotate 90 degrees, then descend. Yeah. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Back and to the left. <laughs> it's just... just like, so, so, so the slow. ladder makes the scene tough for me. It does. I can't... Because it's just they, straight up and down. Look at it. Precise chances of, and then it falls exactly stop. in this, like, eight feet opening, too. Yeah. Like, I... This is so there are so many things eyes. that I can't yeah. handle about this. I really wanted it to go by and it to be a cardboard cutout of the, of the guy in there. This is oh, really no. long. Yeah, just... right there. Like, that, like, long, dramatic glance <laughs> they have at each other, too, is just very... It's a very dirty window. I can't. <laughs> that had the cadence of a sinking ship. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been an honor yeah. playing with you tonight. <laughs> I just... <laughs> oh. It's still going. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's to demonstrate how yep. long now he's dead. Yeah. fell for. In like a slow motion crumble at the end. Yeah. I, at first I was like, oh, is it getting caught up in the wires? Or yeah. Like, is it slowing down because it's getting... Like, it, it, and it did hit it, the wires and it... Burn, you fucker. It snapped it right back. Yeah. yeah. His bruises are already starting to go away, which is interesting. Yeah. Well, I figure they had to film this during the off season. Mm. What does that have to do with his bruises? Well, I'm probably like... <laughs> no, here's, oh, so I was thinking... It, the makeup's running. Oh, okay. It's hot. It's sweaty. Well, the, it's it probably just, like they're July. Doing, it just looks yellow. Like, it looks already yellowed around. Yeah, I, I saw, yeah. Old, I saw like the they're yellow. old bruises, so. It would be oh, fun. there was the mom. That was the mom, wasn't it? Uh, I, I think she was just outside maybe. of there. Like, you saw her for a half second. I. It would be funny to me if they, they took a pull with the kid, the son, still not knowing what his dad does, and be like, my daddy changes light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. <at the> end. <laughs> Okay. Did anybody else expect there to be more endings? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very like, like, like thank you. Like, the like, day was president. saved. That's yeah. it. We yeah. don't know yeah. where the kids went. We don't know <laughs> what ended up happening. We have no, you know. It's it's a very unceremonious sunset to it this is. movie. Yeah. I wanted I wanted it to be like like if that was his wife. He's like, do I still get them tomorrow? Or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but. Well, that is sudden death. <sighs> that was oh, sudden death. Oh boy. So, at the end of every episode, we do view again, brew again, where we would s- describe if we would a watch this movie again or b drink this beer again. Let's start with James. <laughs> view again, brew again. No. Can we just interrupt Luke Robitaille himself? <laughs> yeah. yes. Mike Lange has said Mike Lange, Mike Lange. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Robitaille himself. That's a weird inconsistency. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. Awesome. Anyway, no. Um. <laughs> There's a guy named Deep Roy, and the, and the <laughs> people did stunts. If you're a stuntman, you can have whatever the name you want. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, and honestly, it's not because it's it's like horrific or anything. It's just boring. It's just boring. It, it that's it commits the number one sin we talk about on the on the podcast about about what ba- what if you're a bad movie you can't do, which is be boring. Right. You know, if, if this movie was over the top, like Cyborg over the top, mm-hmm. I'd. Like I've watched Cyborg a couple times, and it's funny and stupid, and like I'm not mm-hmm. sitting there, you know, plastered to the TV, but I'll have it on and be like, ah ha ha, good look background, how dumb good these background guys stuff. Are. Yeah, it's, exactly. This movie doesn't feel as long as Cyborg does, this being despite being like half an hour longer though. Yeah, I just don't. I wish there was more. That's I know we I kind of said that a lot yeah. lately, but I I wish there was more. There's 
the 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 scene with him being like, "Did you know this is the most explosive, the dangerous plastic explosive?" Oh in the world? yeah, like that's a funny. That was it funny. Is funny. Yeah, I wanted mm-hmm. to see that work on someone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted more of that. Or like, like bring it up again a half hour later. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like in the in the like when, <laughs> when he like goes through the like yes. the window, be like, right. this is the most powerful. Yeah. yeah, like it it starts off strong, and then I feel like there's just no payoff. It doesn't. It doesn't get to where it wants to go. Right. I, mm-hmm. I think it's more of what it is. Um, Brew again. Yes, I really like this. Um, I like Belgian quads anyway, or Belgian dark style, whatever. Belgian dark strong. Dark strong. Um, <laughs> but I really like that you can taste the uh, the, the currents. currents in it because I think like we, like you talked about Max. So sometimes with with this style, you just get like it is booze and it hits you, and you can really taste that flavor in it. Ryan, um, yeah, I uh, so view again, nah, it, again echoing. I think a lot of what we're all gonna have to say. It's just it's a fairly boring movie, especially for a Van Damme movie, and I'm a little bummed that a lot of the more interesting technical aspects of the movie weren't more prominent, like the opening long cut, um, long uh, long shot, excuse me, in, into the house that's burning down, and then that really cool shot uh, where the camera starts like kind of by. Uh, down by the ice and moves up through the top of the dome and all that stuff. That's really cool. Like, I mean, if, if your narrative is going to be kind of ho-hum and everything else is kind of standard fare, you can maybe spruce it up with the technical aspect of a lot of things, and it didn't do any of that really either okay. as far as how, how the movie is shot and uh, stuff like that. Uh, Brew again, yeah, this is super good. Thanks, Stephanie. No yep. problem. Please bring more. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will watch this again if I see it like on TV, but only in certain scenes. I will watch the kitchen fight again. And I will watch the um, the helicopter crash scene again. <laughs> I probably will we, go find it on YouTube and watch it a couple we, more times. We should make you a GIF of that, just the slow descent. <laughs> World's longest um, GIF. Yeah. Oh, geez, drink yeah. again, uh, brew again. Of course, of course. Um, I had a, I've had the opportunity to have both the old one and the new one, both good for different reasons. Mm. Um, but no, this is quads. I quads are hit or miss for me. Um, either because it's just more like booze or, but, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's November when this episode comes out, whatever. But, um, but, uh, the fruit I think really adds a lot to this beer that, you know, sets it aside. Cause we, I also had the, um, evil urges, which is the, um, shorts is, uh, mm-hmm. Belgian dark strong with sugar cane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had that for, or I had that for What's that? Jeepers Creepers. Right. That's back right. when we were all drinking different beers. And that one was, that's more of like, it's a solid beer, but there's, it's a little bit, maybe, maybe because it's, they have the sugar cane in it, but I find that one too sweet and just too boozy for I me get to really enjoy. Belgian, like the yeast ester out of that beer and more almost like, it's almost like someone brewed a barley wine and I was, just threw yeah. a little bit of Belgian flavor into yeah, it. Yeah, that's. That's, That's what I get from that beer. Yeah. So I was trying. Uh, sorry, I was trying to think of another uh, quad that I'd had somewhat recently, and I really liked the uh, the Weyerbacher quad. Yes. I oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's real one good. of your favorites. Yeah. But sorry, happy beer. birthday. But yeah, that that is a good one. Um, Stephanie, view again, brew again. I. This is one of those movies that there's like a small little window of movies that are like those niche like me and my hockey buddies will watch them not because they're good movies but because like oh look at this but because like, they hockey. put hockey in this <laughs> movie and it's funny like just like we were talking before the show about how because i picked this movie and how um i said that that uh you should all be grateful that we watched this and not the cutting edge which is another one of those like it's a terrible movie it's like a romantic comedy but it's got hockey in it so it's mm. like that niche like <laughs> so the chances that i will watch this movie again are high but the chances that i will watch it again because i think it's a very good movie are low which i love jean claude van damme i mean my beer is named after him like <laughs> i i can tell you how many times i've seen blood sport when I turned 21, the bar was playing a uh, double impact and nice. I, with really bad subtitles that were mostly wingdings. Huh? I, Oh wow. I got nothing. But Is that the uh, one with Dennis Rodman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the tiger, <laughs> but yeah, in terms of actually being a good movie, the other thing I think is like, we talked about it a little bit. Like it's a very long movie Yeah. for being yeah. like a cheesy action movie. Like I feel like they, they needed to go, further in the away from just like typical action movie 
to validate the fact that it's like a two hour long yeah, drama happening. It's a commitment. Yeah. Sudden yeah. yeah. dearth. And I had forgotten that it was this long. When I actually yeah. pulled it up and I saw that it was an hour and 50 minutes, I was like, geez. That's yeah, really I was a little late. surprised by that as well. Yeah. So how about so, sudden it, I, I feel like this movie could easily be 20 minutes shorter if they cut a few sequences yeah. or, mm-hmm. or they could cut just one I, just one sequence the helicopter the helicopter crash. sequence oh, yeah, that was <laughs> no. I mean that was probably about 10 minutes of yeah. uh, you know They're, like I feel like the the fights in the locker room or when he's getting chased I think those scenes go on a little mm-hmm. long like if that's maybe why I yeah there's a lot of these, running around pipes there is. Yeah, a lot of steam there's a lot tunnel. of chase scenes. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of you know, which, I mean, I guess it's typical fare for a straight up action movie, but that doesn't really seem like the entire like that's not really where this is trying to go. Yeah, yeah. He spends uh, for an action movie. He spends a lot of time trying to not get into any action. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, again, like that, that goes to the point of he's just a regular guy. He's not a special forces he's guy. He's just so a he's regular like, guy that these... can climb up rivets yeah, along the side of Mountain yeah. Arena. But he's not like a trained fighter or anything like right. that. So he's not going to. And he just needed to make more pipe, more, one more, shots. yeah, yeah, more, uh, pipe dart guns, pipe dart, and, pipe dart guns, and, yeah. uh, squirt gun, flamethrowers, <laughs> yep. and it's, you know, there's a lot of gimmicky stuff. All completely very home alone. There, yeah. There's a scene that cuts to him. Just he's got his long sleeve shirt on, but obviously filled with tubes. Yeah. <laughs> like you can definitely see it. <laughs> more tubes, <than> man. <laughs> and I guess would you brew this beer again? Because uh, yes, actually, I I plan on brewing this beer again. I'm trying to. I'm gonna try to take it back down to the original ABV. Which was, like I said, probably about a, a percent and a half less. But I am really pleased with how it came yeah, out. It's very so. good. And I'm glad yes. you guys all liked it. Thank mm-hmm. you for the mm-hmm. feedback. Yep. Um, and, well, I guess, did you have a good time? I did. I did. Great. Quality. Great. It sounds like we boots. didn't try hard enough, you guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Absolutely. And uh, thank you, listener, for uh, listening in or drinking along with us. Mm-hmm. And as always, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Podbean, WordPress, uh, send us your hate mail at goodbrewsbadviews at gmail.com. Uh, rate and review us on iTunes. That helps more people find out about the podcast, which mm-hmm. would be really cool. And uh, please watch and drink responsibly. See you guys Pe- next time. Peace. Goodbye. You know what's kind of sad is they actually can't drink along with this. Uh, this uh, 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 Sorry, guys. Bye, folks. <laughs>